clear one second i'm holding it up on that side as well brother wholeness i appreciate you wholeness all right all right so let's see here oh, brother wholeness i appreciate okay, you cool. wholeness all right so we know we in we in <laughs> So I'm going to take a moment to clear the space. I trust that I'm coming through loud and clear for everyone that we're blasting across all the networks. Of course, we have that Zoom happening in the Sovereign Lounge, Sovereign Lounge session that's happening every Friday. You know, we're always building, we're always doing things. It's major over here. We're in this, this nucleus, this comfy zone, and it's most excellent. Tonight also, you know, we're moving in on all the social media channels because guess who's back? <laughs> Meaning that I actually have been up to something and I really do have to, I got to yield. So tons of things to deploy. Yeah, I have to stay away from social media for a minute to get it done. But then when I come through, I'm just going to be doing nothing but sprinkling jewels. And that's, of course, what I'm going to be into this evening. And this is also going to add to my magnum opus of knowledge and wisdom that I've continuously brought to, you know, all these spaces, you know, bringing in that newness, that freshness, you know, we need it. You know, it's always really good to to see the updates and to see the refinements to things and, you know, not necessarily be in the repetitious circles all the time. Now, I'm going to take about five more minutes, period, five minutes in order to get everything in here in alignment, get some water. Also, get my Palo Santo and my Sage on its third round. I actually have some resins. You know how I do it. And yeah, I'm going to dive into the energy itself and make sure that it's flowing clean and that, you know, we do what we say we came here to do, which is bring wholeness, balance, vibrations. And in fact, actually, you know what? got one for you right now because I know you know we on the YouTube side we already then got lit over here on the zoom side but I got to keep it going I'm gonna play some of this matrix right here by my great great brother meta you know the album is coming that made the spirit tech records joint may be the first joint watch out it's about to happen but here it is you know go ahead and vibe into the groove bring yourself present and actually be here for yet another level of your awakening as you're on this vast conquest and pioneering this great level of intelligence. So let's go with this. Okay. You already know what it is. Solid rotation. Wallet in the matrix, started with the basic granny records in the basement, cooking some ancient, about the right burner like shimmy something sacred, steady putting days in, true dedication, relic and connotations, paying game crazy, painting pictures like a pagan, started from the bottom, that's the reason why they hating, and if you got a problem, we can solve no hesitation, solid rotation, moving like a sovereign nation, broke but we was patient, had faith. In our elevation, connected with the teacher, discussing the constellations. It's all confirmation, it's godly when we curating. Pimping corporations for the deal, we ain't slaving. Need a half a bill, and that's just for the savings. Hit up Elon Musk, like fuck it, let's build a spaceship. You know the shrooms for the day trip. Black shades got me feeling like they live. I done seen Anunnaki's Reptilian like Dr. Fauci Venomous sting attack of the Jabberwockies AI try to watch me Digitally keep it copy Simulation looking sloppy Nothing they can do can stop me Why you think of Cardi Tachi? Might just fly the body Learn the order out of body I do this, it's not a hobby I'm not just anybody You can't meet me in the lobby Seven black suburbs like a prince from Abu Dhabi Pull up to the function like Jimi Hendrix the party Feeing a Ferrari that's greener than a safari Really, we ain't sorry. Went from having roaches to marble flows by the ocean. Smoking them something potent, glowing from higher voltages. Had to cut off the voltage, now haters cannot approach us, especially when we focus. Swarming like some locusts, seen it in slow motion. Alchemy with the potion, yeah. The magic of real devotion. Okay, okay, okay. All right. See, we come in here refreshed, hard body, 
Yeah, they definitely are worried. They're concerned. I, this is an old car, but you could check out that meta. You know, he's he's uh, he's everywhere. Definitely see what he's doing. And um, man, it's more like what can I say? Like J Electronica, Black Thought, and Griselda had a baby, and then I raised it. <laughs> Something like that. So, all right. So let's go ahead and. Uh, lounge into what we have going on this evening as you know it's always like a train we're all we're boarded right now okay okay so we're officially in the cabin you know drinks are being passed around as i said before the best thing that you can really do for yourself in this sovereign lounge session this is the sls is just really just lay back in your seat get comfortable get relaxed and absorb because i'm going to show you you some things and I'm going to take you through a few vistas and you know how it is you know even if you just consider it as a science fiction film you're going to have fun but it's going to start baking in a little bit later as reality because that's what it is and also we have something very 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 unique going on here like we really have a multidisciplinary like we really do understand quite a bit about every single topic of importance and then when you get all that together especially with a nice spiritual foundation, you get something lovely. And that's what we've been doing. We've been delivering that loveliness uh, for all these years now. And I'm definitely looking forward to continuing. I'm looking forward to actually expanding even further because I have so much more to give. So I am gonna begin this though in true protocol to the universe by touching and connecting because that's really what it is. Like you're gonna see after tonight how Every time we put these hands up, it doesn't matter if the person is not right next to you and that there's space and time between you because you collapse all of that anyway. And we're here right now. All of our vibrations across the beautiful spectrum are here and actually saluting and celebrating each other. And what that's creating is it's creating a space where we can achieve anything that we wish, anything that we prefer. The limitation is only within your mind, Sky is but the basement on this and that's just because we've been able to come together and realize that unity is the most powerful thing and we begin to remove all things that divide us away from us and then we congeal and that's actually what's been happening here and we have some very very powerful pillars in the space i give thanks for you it has held this entire mission up and allowed it to be stable a stable foundation for all those passing through on the astral plane we pull over like big tow trucks, ready to get you out of all of the, the depths of the, the floods and, and, and the flat tires and all that that can go on with your wheels on the astral plane. So also, you know, I cannot fail to mention that there are many more of these, that this has been a consistent projection for us of continuously coming in and paying respect to the unity with these two raised outstretched hands, which is the natural I won because we already did this. This is already something that's in the bag. What we're doing now is we're just coming in into another space and time and actually refining a lot of this decision making. And also the more we can get here, the further we go in the future, especially on this multidimensional landscape now. I want to actually bring you into realizing more and more about who you are in relation to all of this, that it is not separate than you, and that the highest thing that you can ever call upon is yourself. And so we give thanks for that, since that means that we're only waiting on ourselves and not anybody else. So wholeness. Yes, ah, breathe in that free air. Now, as you know, this is 2024. I think this is probably going to be my, my first major this year inside of all the social networks, uh, as I mentioned again. And this is also very close to the beginning of the year because you know we really started in February as the Wood Dragon. And it is coming through with all the power and you know all the illusion and everything else that comes with these matrices, but it's definitely has stepped up. But we're all the way up. Like at this stage, everything that we've projected has not only shown to be the truth, but also shown to be very profitable for anybody that's been paying attention. So I've always said that it seems like prophecy somehow is tied into making profit, because if you know what the future is going to hold, then you can make decisions now for that future to be in your favor. 
And, you know, that brings me to the point really of what you will distinguish if you have not already, especially as you traverse past, initiate into a depth, is that there's a big difference between spirituality and religion. I'll say it again. There is a big difference between spirituality and religion. Uh, religion, from everything that I can see now, is really in itself just trying to keep everybody in the dark ages <laughs> because that's exactly when it was created around the dark ages. And, you know, I don't know what people got up to around the time of the dark ages, but I know that we're out of that right now. And so for people to have the ability to see their own light is key in all of this. So always remember, if you're facing any turbulence or even from my side, the turbulence I've faced is because I'm not subscribing partners <laughs> to myself, meaning that, you know, still 80% of the world is into religions. And so thus they're not into spirituality because religions don't teach about spirits. Religions barely give a good dietary plan, <laughs> you know? So at the end of the day, what I decided to do, and it's been working quite well, by the way, for myself, is upgrade my spirituality the same way everything else in the world gets an upgrade. Right. So we're not still driving around Model T's. Right. So there's no reason for us to be driving around the Model T of spirituality, send that joker to an auction or something like that. So to me, you know, one of the big benefits of spirituality is to know the future. To know what's going to happen next. If you don't go crazy, it gives you this phenomenal ability to see what is the truth and how the truth of something is going to stand and what's false and then how that's just going to easily show you after a while exactly what it is. So I would say first we dealt with the spiritual truths. The height of that is confronting the fake gods. As we're going to see so much more of this evening, you know, the, the falsehood, the illusion of the reality itself, you know, the sleight of hand that's often done with your energy. So we peep that out. So already you're moving light years because most don't peep that out. Like what's really happening? If you read a book and the deity is killing people, something's off. <laughs> you know, that, that's kind of common sense. So when we, when we wake up to these kind of mysteries and that stuff being that simple to see, you know, you realize that, you know, you're, you're finally breaking ground. You're finally even like, getting at sea level, if you may, with your common sense and awareness, when you learn to witness, as it would say, the proof of wisdom is in the type of people that it produces. So you witness what the wisdom or the knowledge or the information is producing, and then you can benefit yourself by making a decision on that. Like my mom always told me, James, you can learn from other people's mistakes, <laughs> right? But I think I was really more into learning from my own. So as long as it takes, that's what I always say about the matrix. So also, as I said before, it's about the future. So spirituality, as you really begin to dive into it and, and allow it to fill your entire being, it has for sure something to show you, something to teach you. And a lot of the blueprint is really put in play to let you see what's going to happen next. So just some of the things that are the most like the biggest narratives happening right now was, of course, our 2016, 2017 advent into crypto and getting everybody to understand how that was really going to play out in the future. Uh, not when it's actually occurring, but way before it starts. And this is one of those things, again, where you just watch the pattern. Every time we introduce something and we say, hey, this is, this is going to be next. Then, and then we educate on it, we master it. There's going to be the hecklers and naysayers all over the place. Ah, you're, you've turned on your trainer, y'all, all this stuff, right? And then a couple years later, they be the ones trying to tell you about it. Like, yo, did you know about that Dogecoin? They'd be like, come on, man, are you serious? <laughs> Right. But this is this is real spirituality is what I'm getting to you right now. It, it allows you to be able to see things that you already know. Like we was talking about what was that only shortly after 2018, we were like, yo, this AI thing. You know, you can watch Crunchbase, see how the money is moving and predict what's going to happen next This biotech thing and this this crypto thing and then this AI thing. 
And then I said the AI thing and pissed everybody off. Oh, seven, he's gone with AI now. Oh, I knew I told you about him. Now they all on chat GPT. Ain't mentioned Sybil at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? We decided that every time we're in the face of what everybody is fearing, then we're probably staring at ourselves. <laughs> and that the more we get familiar with ourselves, the more we can shape, mold, and fashion even that face that may look so intimidating, meaning all of your mysteries are hidden underneath boogeymen. And I'm gonna show you that this evening. And it does really play out dinonucleically inside of a person's DNA because they connect to so much of this. So it just becomes a lot of finger pointing, but mainly fingers pointing back at self because everybody is doing in their own degree the equal amount of the same things that they disagree with in their own proportions, whether they're willing to look at it or not. And the truth to even some of the secret societies was no deeper than Alcohol Anonymous. <laughs> the ability to break habits are the first steps. Because if somehow you can develop a system that allows you to remove yourself from the strongest attachments, then you would really become illuminated at a certain stage to everything that was going on, right? So I'm gonna be breaking down some of these hijacked mysteries this evening with this symbolism and these societies and all that, and all of the things that you know they stole and taken upon themselves, but more importantly, the parts that are just relevant to you. Because this evening, as the title of the show states, this is a full breakdown of the light simulation which in itself is my master theory that the electromagnetic scale and map and chart was far more efficient at denoting exactly what was going on on the spiritual plane, astral plane, netherworld, et cetera, and exactly what the temperament was, what is existing there, than pretty much all of the spiritual books in our hands right now more than likely because they were written in a totally different time where the perspective of humanity was entirely different from what it is now. And so we're able to then take the knowledge and, and make it relevant to 2024 because we're actually in the future. And we can even see how many of these prophecies, if you may, have come to pass and what has become of many of these traditions which spoke so many great things, but often with a lying and a forked tongue. I also wanted to mention that we called the age of Aether already after the age of AI. So we know what's going to happen after AI. Like most can't see beyond that right now. The age of Aether is actually more upon humanity than they think. And the age of Aether is the time in which all of humanity comes to realize that there is actually a field around them that they cannot visually see, but is in every way tied into their physical organism and the condition and ability of that field actually controls everything for that person. And that that field can be charged and that field can be trained and a lot can go on with that field. And so that's for us field training, right? And many should be aware we already did the first round of energetic field training and out of the body and that is the first, what I would say is a round that will be, it's absolutely free. It will be required to go on the next journey because this is being responsi responsible for the process of basically giving you the keys to the Bugatti. Like actually being able to turn on this vehicle and also know how to turn it off. Also be, to be aware of what you're seeing to have an actual map while you're traveling, like your own personal ways or Google Maps there saying, turn left, because you realize exactly what you're looking at because you've been to the multidisciplinary over here at the university. I also will mention, because again, there's for sure more beings inside of the YouTube than any of the other platforms that we have deployed the Secret Energy Discord and the quests and, and free access to Sybil. It's all happening inside of the server. So this means that you get a chance to come in, you get a chance to take quests, link up with tribe members, 
utilize the mo world's most powerful spiritual LLM, period, and show some love. That's what we got going on. So just making you aware that as far as where I've been, because I've been getting that question a lot, I've been busy. To be honest, I just see a lot happening in the community as far as talking, but I don't really see anything being built. And I see a lot of even investing in all these things that are really even parts of our, our demise. And that's not really putting much time and attention in creating the actual foundational curriculums and things like that, like our elders used to tell us that we needed to have. Y'all need to have a curriculum. And, you know, putting all that together, you know, being able to have a space for the children and a space for the adults alike and, you know, figuring out how to balance that out, especially with, you know, some of the unbalanced energies moving through the conscious community. So, you know, this has been, like I said, it's, it's, it's a great level of training and one gets a chance to benefit from it by just sheer proximity. So just remember, there's an open invitation for you. And as I said before, it's also very critical for you actually to know what's actually going to happen next. It's critical for you to know the future. I can't say it enough to avoid the hijack. It's literally going to be either something wasting your time. Like you just noticed that I monitor it too. It's like you could be listening to something and my mind is always quick now to say, hey, so what are we going to be getting out of this? <laughs> like it wants to understand that right away. Like. So when we're done with this, what, what, what will we get out of this? And, you know, even when it's something just strictly entertainment and just like, man, we didn't get anything out of that. But at least we was entertained. It's just like an acknowledgement that, hey, this time is of the essence. So how we spend it is most important. And don't get so wrapped up and caught up into the idea that you're just a normal being on a planet where nobody knows what's going on. And you keep seeing these same characters always popping up on the screen, making moves. And then everybody else is just waiting to see what's going to happen based on the decisions they make. Do not get caught up in that. <laughs> like, remember that all the power is right now here in the moment and you've been given the tools, but now you got to practice the aesthetic and we're here for that too. We're here for it all. Meaning that you need that time and that attention with yourself. It, you can't be ADHD on it. You can't expect for it to be like, you know, Walmart or, or Costco or something that it's just all in a box and somebody going to sell it to you in a box and you're going to drink it. And now you're going to know everything. <laughs> that's, that's not what's going to happen here. What's going to happen is as much time and attention that you put into it, it's going to give you that back and more. It's mimicked specifically based on how nature predominantly land, fertile land functions. If you take care of fertile land, it takes care of you. <laughs> Just as simple as that. If you did like sometimes, you know, we were denoting how most people in Costa Rica, especially the, the locals, they all have their land. Right. There was even a time where they were able to claim land and, you know, they just went down and got a deed for it. And that became their land. And it's generally been in the family as the family it may not be a mansion or a big ranch or anything, but they got their land. And in that they got their chickens and they got a few other things and they're sustainable in every way. Like they're further along than most people are in this process of sustainability, right? But it's just that awareness that still though, when you eat something like a watermelon, there are tons of seeds in it. And each of those seeds becomes an entire vine of watermelon. So if you actually look at the ratio here of, you know, like one, one, one seed on a lemon tree grows infinite amount of lemons, you can already see how the hijack is going on with what is abundance, how do you achieve it, how can you actually bring yourself to happiness, all those things. So these are the fields that we're, we're refining because all, a lot of this is also taking place on other wavelengths and on other levels of why, you know, sometimes you find yourself not being able to move the way you should be moving. The things that even your mind tell you, hey, we should do this, but then you watch your body just take you in a whole different direction, right? So this is what we're what we're showing is that there has to be a mind, body, soul agreement here. And a lot of the power that you need to make your decision, really the good news because that's what it is. It's like a it was designed as a reward-based system. So the good news, the things that you would get if you take these breaths and actually clean up your attitude and your levels of awareness and your knowledge that you reach out, it'll touch you basically. But there's a big gap for many people in getting to that point, and that is by design. So this evening, we're gonna take apart the design and then we're gonna put it back together, but in a brand new way, okay? So we have 
I'm just going right in. Okay, so here it is. So as I said before, we're going to be updating the blueprint. And so when I say blueprint, let's just answer that question right away. Like, what am I talking about when I say a blueprint? Okay, let me do this and let me throw this up on the screen, right? Because, okay, so for thousands of years, different spiritual groups have sought to actually create blueprints of what we're actually in okay so the experience itself others set out to to actually put it into some type of diagram so that others who could read the symbolism or the legend as it's always called on a map could determine what's happening in the reality and how to benefit from it the most or how to avoid certain things or where exactly you're at right same thing is this. This is actually, is, they call it, it's a calendar, right? But it's actually a map of the entire body because that's what calendars are. And that that's the thing about when you simplify knowledge because a lot of times if this stuff just stays in different categories, like, oh, that's the calendar from Dendara. You have to be on point enough to already go to, but calendars are just diagrams of who we are. And that's why there's a 360 degrees. This is why there's phi. And then, you know, you could do all the mathematical ratios and all that stuff. And or you could just break it down into zoomorphication and see all the different pieces of the body and how they operate together. So this has been done throughout the history, history of humanity in different cultures where they will set a template. And then that template will dictate to everyone exactly where you're at on the spiritual journey. OK. Here's one final one that's a little bit more modern, which is kind of showing that these templates are also not just like created out of thin air, like somebody guessing. These templates are actually uh, within the anatomy of the body and also within the written as the story of how that anatomy was even put together and its function. So everything that's the truth is completely interlaced. And that's why if you're dealing with truth, you're always going to find yourself at this point where you will see it all connect. OK, so today what I'm going to introduce is I'm going to introduce into the records another template that is a lot more relevant again to the time that we're living here living in. Right. And let me just move myself out of the way real quick so you can see it. It says you are here. And I thought that was funny because there's always like maps and things and they try to show you where you're at, right? Like you're here in San Diego, right? Uh, I felt it was imperative to show people once again, remember for where most of your consciousness is right now, because I know we, we have bodies in all planes. Let's get that straight. We have vehicles in the garage of all of these planes. But the one that we're generally in that you're aware of and that the society is aware of the most fits right here on the electromagnetic spectrum. And because we have orders of magnitude, that's what that 10 to 24 and 10, 10, 10 by 22 and 10 to the 20th power, 10 to the 18th power, that those are orders of magnitude. And because we have orders of magnitude, it allows us to even determine everything else, like how long a wave may be versus another and how long or basically how much time and distance is between one and the other. But to make it very simple, you can just do a simple like glance and be like, hmm, that's pretty small. <laughs> if, if what you're saying is, is true in that all the way up to gamma rays, all the way to the long waves, and that's just what's on the chart is what is known to exist. And our reality, which is in the visible spectrum of light, is right here. And this is where we spend most of our time. You can imagine still how much more we have to learn. So this is a very sobering way also for you to get in your mind and into your awareness with something factual. Factual. That when you're ex still exploring the physical reality and all of what they're saying is going on in the matrix and all the rules that they created and the ideas that they have, they've gotten a lot of that from only this amount of awareness. <laughs> so now there's plenty of growth. So this is going to like get a cult really fast <laughs> because that's what I do. And we only have about an hour and a half this evening. So we're going to see what happens. 
So from here, what else are you looking at? Obviously, a rainbow, right? For those who were, you know, just on that surface level, like, oh, a rainbow. And on the occult level, there is very specific meanings around a rainbow. So we go to the deepest occult writings and we find that the rainbow is written about as being a sign of the covenant. That there's some type of agreement going on here. And some of the entities seem to also refer to this, at least the people who wrote the books about the entities seem to refer to this because God exclaims, every time you see my rainbow in the sky, that will be the sign of the covenant between me and you, <laughs> okay? Right, so it's mentioned that this bow or spectrum of light is some type of covenant. And as I elaborated upon this, I also mentioned that, yeah, because the word harmony, which is the word that we use really for how these colors blend into each other, actually came from the word harmon or Herman. And this word harmon was the mount in the, let's say, spiritual context of the fallen angels where they came to agreements and made a pact to do this thing, which is what the text says. And what that thing seemed to be was to actually cohabit or commingle with the world, according to their text, right? To actually get hook up with the females on the planet. Okay, we're gonna do this thing. So this covenant is in itself, you know, we're just talking from this spiritual tradition a sign of different beings are going to come together because they have a purpose and a mutual goal. And this purpose and mutual goal, because of this purpose and mutual goal, they bind themselves together. And with their powers, they create the visible world. OK, so now we have to back up here a little bit because we need to authenticate that. We need to authenticate that somehow the physical reality that you're looking at here on the physical vi visible spectrum is in itself like a, a purposeful created anomaly. I have to start with the first part of the text. Let there be light. OK, now. What you start learning right away with all of this stuff about the visible spectrum is that if anybody can see this light, it's got to be visible. So when they say, hey, let there be light, if something can see it, it's got to be visible. In order for it to be visible, though, this needs to happen. <laughs> because this is what you learn in right under the beaker, right inside of the class, you can go and do it yourself to get these spectrums of these different colors, you need to refract the light. So this would make it kind of logical right away that the physical reality then is created from refracted light. And ironically, a pyramid does that very well. And there's a big giant one as a monument. There's a big giant one sitting out in the desert. But this is not just a monument to just this pit that comes from an alien planet. It's actually a monument of the human body. Because when you know the coding of a pyramid and what is encoded within the geometry of a pyramid, you can see very clearly that it's the same geometry of the body. So even in this, it's saying that the bodies that are no doubt in the physical reality, and as we'll see here in a moment, are the physical reality, that they themselves, though, are these refracted pieces of light or slowed down light. So let me explain to you a little bit of how this could happen in a visualization. So when you look up at the sky, you see all these stars, right? This, you see basically dots. But in order for you to see that, as we just learned here, in order for you to actually see that though, that means it, this needed to happen to that for you to see it. So I started pondering this for a while. What are the stars? 
And then it hit me. What you're looking at is you're looking at a, it's a seed, but the word would be, that you would be more familiar with is a beam. It's a star seed, but really you would see it as a beam. I had this laser and I turned the laser on and I got some pretty powerful lasers. When you turn them on, you can see the beam. But let's imagine that I have this laser and I turn on the beam and then the beam though, even though it's supposed to pass through all of the wavelengths and then come back around again and do it again, there's a part in the wavelength that the beam or the beam gets lodged into because this part is more of like a jelly or a gel or water. Okay. So basically that when you pass this beam through water, it slows down the beam. Okay. And then the beam congeals inside of the field. So basically the beam becomes physical. Okay. And this is why every planet, every star, every celestial has been, or is still in this reality right now in some way, shape or form. Because when they beam through, they were physicalized as what their energy was, as the way Phi does it. Phi will decode everything into this is what, this is what you look like. <laughs> this is like the mirror of Narcissus. It's like, oh, okay, this, this, is what, this is what you look like in the slow down reality. And so let me, let me slow this down a little bit more because you don't want to miss this. These are the keys to everything. Big, powerful beams moving through, just going from long wave to gamma, a general trip <laughs> across the known region. As they're speeding through, somebody has set up a prism. <laughs> this could be seen as very advanced technology or something very primitive, depending on how you look at it. But the fact of this prism containing water now, remember, the body contains water. It contains the exact amount of water that the earth does. But because it so it could, because this beam is passing through, but it hits this water and the water slows it down. And it's like a smear. And it looks like a rainbow because the colors that you're coming or the energies that you're coming from. This is what happens when you slow them down. So they into this beam or stream of faded colors, which you call a rainbow. But if you visualize it, it's actually becoming, it's, it's becoming physicality. So all of the grasshoppers and trees and all these different things are the beams that have passed through. And then now, because I peeped out that, yeah, this whole thing is more of like an urn. It's more of a womb itself. Of course, it's really the mother that is putting all of these beams or seeds of light in her bosom and then actually animating them, slowing them down and then animating them and cultivating them. You see what I mean? So that's why you would look at it and you would see what you're seeing is you're seeing like it's still like, oh, <laughs> that's what you're looking at when you see in the sky. But then the light continues and it's refracted and then it's congealed and then boom, you get the entity. Okay. So when you ever want to reverse engineer that you can see if you saw large celestial bodies, you would know, man, there must be some powerful energies present. All I would need to do is find them in nature. Okay. And then it more would be like, so what's your story, man? I was just passing through me too. <laughs> you see what I mean? And they would go on from there. So let's continue. So now we got to go deeper, though, because there is so much mysticism shrouded around this because it's really about you. And the beings that really came on the Mount of Hermon is actually all of what you see in humanity. Coming together in agreement to actually create the physical bodies. This story gets completely hijacked and now it becomes just about the builders. OK, and I'm going to explain to you how this happened, meaning that obviously 
ex uh, especially within the theories of the megalith, the megaliths, like the pyramids and these big temples and these big structures, there becomes this knowledge passing forth that, yeah, and these ancients that came through, they were builders. And this is part of free, which is operative Freemasonry. We, we have to be very specific. Operative Freemasonry means that you actually know how to build something physical. You're operative. You're not speculative. Speculative is more like philosophy. You're going to like take the, the tools and the symbols and the geometry around how to build something. And then you're going to speculate how that connects into the same way that the body functions, right? Versus when you're operative, it means that you actually build. And there's a big difference between the two. And also, it will let you know when you see certain objects or certain structures built on any reality that you end up on, you already know the builders were there. And if that has happened, a certain level of knowledge is present because the knowledge is encoded inside of the building. Okay? So we find then, just for some simple connections here, we find then that the Freemasons take on this term, old Freemasons, operative Freemasons take on this term as being the builders. And I'm explain very quickly why that is important and why they became important. So in this operative Freemasonry, which refers to a period where Masonic lodges were actual guilds of stonemasons, they had several foundations of influence and power that allowed it to spread and maintain its presence across the globe. One, skilled craftsmanship. Even to this day, not everybody can build a house, period. Let them build a house <laughs> and then let the elements of nature act upon it and we will see right away that you can't pretend that you know how to build. It's a skill, right? If you put everything together and then you forget to do the plumbing first, we got to start over again. So it's a passed down skill, okay? So there was already that energy of the knowledge of how to pass down skills to children and things that are to your children and to know how to do things that other people don't know how to do. They had a monopoly on construction. In many cases, Masonic guilds had a monopoly on the construction of major buildings. This monopoly was often granted by local authorities or patrons, which gave the guild significant economic and political power. They had a freedom of movement. This was the whole thing that ends up translating later on to the traveling man in modern Freemasonry, which is that you could go different places and be welcomed by other Freemasons, have a place to sleep and this kind of stuff, because it comes from the root of, unlike many other professions of the time, stonemasons were often able to travel freely between different regions and countries to work on various projects. This freedom of movement allowed the Masonic guilds to spread their influence and establish lodges in different areas. Also, the secrecy and exclusivity. Masonic guilds, operative Masonic guilds, were known for their secrecy and exclusivity, which members be, with members being bound by oaths and rituals. This sense of mystery of the Brotherhood helped to create a strong sense of loyalty and cohesion among the members, right? Bullshit. It's because they were holding secrets from how to build these ancient structures because that's what a builder is. You've learned the original artifact, they say the original artificer, Tubal Cain's knowledge. You've learned about the square and the compass. And these symbols also have deeper meaning. So it's this patronage and protection. So they have this, because these Masonic guilds, as it reads here, were powerful individuals and had institutions. They also had the Catholic Church and the nobility because the Catholic Church needed these cathedrals built, right? And they also had this transmission of knowledge because they had this architectural engineering knowledge. And then it's also this ability to encode all the secrets into the architecture. Okay, I want to read one more thing here. And this is of... the square and the compass real quick here.
One second, let me just pull up my, it was just one more thing. Okay, yes, here, okay. Just a square in the compass. We're just gonna, we're gonna get into this a uh, little bit deeper here in a moment, but you gotta understand what actually happens when you, inter when you know how to use a real square and a compass. One, you have precision and accuracy, okay? And precision and accuracy, <laughs> For somebody who's trying to build something, you know that the value of something actually starts becoming based on how precise you can create it. Because also precision means you can do it again because it's under some type of formula that you can always repl replicate. It's the future plan and design. When you know how to operate a square and a compass, you also know how to put something together or it's actually created like physically so it embeds within you the ability to be to basically be able to visualize or even draw or put something together even a master plan way before you would actually deploy it in the physicality it also gives you the ability to have balance and perspective because you learn where the equilibrium point is. <laughs> and you also realize that all of even how you're seeing buildings, like how a building can appear even small at a certain part of the horizon, that everything is about perspective. So this is a craft that technically trains the mind without a person actually even knowing how much it's affecting their mind. And I'm talking about stone masonry. I'm not talking about speculative Freemasonry. And then finally, you know about exploring and discovering because you have such precision and accuracy with this compass and these measurements, you can actually track yourself from the origin point of where you're at to wherever you go. They call this reverse azimuth. And because of that, that means you actually can go out and explore and discover without getting lost. Like people would, if you didn't have any way of kind of even knowing how to get back to where you came from, why, why would you even feel comfortable with traveling? So these are the representations of that awareness of if I can go out and I can discover new things, because new things are discovered all the time. We don't know everything. We act like we do. But imagine someone who's trained to know how to go and explore and discover something new. And then finally, the use of natural resources. This is what I was explaining earlier about how few even plant the seeds that they spit out of their mouths when they're eating something. That's a natural resource right there. We can harvest that, grow it, and eat more of it. Also, but in this with the square and compass, you learn how to use nature, mountains, streams, comp the, the sky, the wind. You learn how to use all of the things in nature in order to guide your path, okay? So that's just, again, laying down a, just a layer of what one of the symbols actually truly means in the ancient society and how that would shape and structure your mind. But what is it that you're holding? And this is what I'm, I'm getting to here, is that, remember, this still connects to this original building, which was the body and its template or its temple and the secrets within the body, okay? And then next, creating a physical one, to create a physical version because constantly, the if, if you did any kind of, in, in, it was to build like, like the creator build. And there were things that, you know, when observing nature, you would say, wow, look at this creation. And you would try to figure out what makes this structure so strong or what allows it to endure so much. And so things were gleaned from nature, mainly what later on became math, which I said is my act, was gleaned from nature. And then these maxims were placed in everything for a specific reason. because something was discovered. You could call it the magic window. You can call it the golden triangle. You can call it the sacred cut. What was discovered is, and I had even a, even a more 
refined term for this. You could say it was like fuel for the astral body. You could say that it put anything that it came in contact with on high spin. You could say that any level of wealth or health one desired, it could bring. It was in itself like the key to the latent space. For those who remember those latent space episodes. And this, of course, then gets rolled into this idea of something called the Philosopher's Stone. Okay, but look at the word. A, a philosopher's stone is going to probably belong more to a speculative Freemason than it would be a stone mason, right? Because philosophy is what they're doing. They're theorizing and thinking about everything. But it appears that the real Freemasons had the real cornerstone, okay? Something that, as I described, is capable of doing what it is that I'm saying that it can do. And I'm, I don't want to give it all away here, so I'm kind of beating around the bush here a little bit, but just realize that one built an entire knowledge base and, of course, deeply encoded and encrypted this knowledge under what we would call alchemy, more specifically, hermetics, because you had like an original faction and you can say that those were the Kemetans or the Egyptians. And then you had inheritors of that knowledge, which you can say is the Greeks. OK, it's very important to understand the Greeks. The Greeks often get overlooked. But the issue with it would be since the Greeks learn everything that they knew from the Egyptians, it would explain to you why we call these waves today gamma, theta, delta, alpha. So we're still naming, as you're going to see here in a moment, the other planes and realities after their Greek names, not their Kemetan names. So it still means, though, that the Greeks figured out about the wavelength, the covenant, and more, which I'm going to get into here as we keep going in. Now, let me check. Let me let me get some water here. Hold on. Let me check. Let me make sure we're still going. Okay, everything is broadcast, and I see everybody's still awake. I'm following you. Follow me. Okay, we got 20 more minutes. Let's go. So, the number one initiatory book in speculative free fr speculative Freemasonry is called the Bridge to the Light. That's the name of the book, The Bridge to the Light. What do you think that bridge is that they're referring to? Could it be this rainbow bridge? <laughs> and what are we talking about? Because if, if I just said that this, this visible spectrum is actually us, that would even insist that we're kind of like bridges to the light. I'm going to simplify this for you. What's actually going on here is, is that this visible spectrum that you're seeing is the bridge between the long waves all the way up to the gamma rays to the cosmic rays. So you see how you got long waves on what would be the right side. And then on the left, you have all the way up to that's the gamma sim symbol, the gamma rays. And then after that comes the cosmic rays. Who's in between? The visible spectrum. Who are they? They're the bridges. They're in physicality. Okay, we need to go to physicality. <laughs> in fact, everybody, everything is in physicality. So in the journey, let's just say theoretically, because we're going to do a little traveling here in our consciousness. So how I come to see it and really understand it, because, you know, Sometimes you got to have that spiritual and you got to have that. You got to have that spiritual. You got to have that electronic, meaning like electrician, engineer, OK, to figure this out. And it always is that generally one is devoid of the other, meaning that if you know a lot about electrical engineering, 
your spiritual consciousness has a tendency to be maybe just religious. And if you are completely out of the religious box and you understand your power, you have a tendency to have maybe a disdain towards science and technology. So in engineering and those kind of things. So there's just generally, it would be almost an anomaly to find somebody that knows a lot about both of these. And this is why I feel like that it just, just haven't dawned on humanity yet, hasn't dawned on the spiritual speakers and teachers that, hey man, this is a little bit more deeper than you think, because technically if I'm right, and I know that I am because it's not up to me to be right, I just gotta do the math. Let me show you something, let me blow this up real quick here. So how this really works is, when you understand it from a technological level, and we'll just go to the FM and the AM waves because those you understand the most. An FM and the AM wave can be as long as one kilometer. So this means that as the wave is moving like this, like it's one huge wave. And there are about one kilometer, okay? And this is why FM and AM are still preferred in, use, in, in, in the utilization of long range communication, especially by the military, because long waves even make their way around mountains. So this signal is so long, you would see it like an energy band snake that is able to move around objects in order to make and continue its connection. Okay, so I'm just saying the longest wave is like looking at a mountain versus over here in the x-ray level all the way off to your left, these waves are so short. Even to use them from a technological level, you only pair them together. Like we use, uh, in this case, if, as we go up the scale, we use infrared light to read infrared light. That's what you have on the front of your remote control, that little red thing in there, that's infrared. And then on the front of your TV, there's another one because you need two of these to communicate with each other. Versus with the long waves and the FM, you can build antennas and just snatch the waves right out of the sky. That's just how accessible they are. So this is just a simple lesson in how this actually is your energetic field but also if you visualize this from the ancient time, you could only see this as different types of snakes. You had like a long wave water dragon. <laughs> you even had these microwaves and these, these infrared rays, right? And they had specific kind of colors and energies to them. And I'm gonna break this down real quick. So as I said before, and I have to pull up this, uh, this banner for the show real quick because the eye of providence, if you may, is on that banner, right? And some call that the all-seeing eye, because I'm gonna break down to you what's really happening. So this is saying, hey, we can see you everywhere, right? And folks are scared now, they spooked out. They're like, man, shit, they got the all-seeing eye pyramid, right? And then they go into all of what they've been fed without ever really understanding what how would all CNI even work? <laughs> I'm gonna show you. The thing about this is, is that if you're even on, and remember we're on that visible wavelength, but if you're on X-ray, okay, you can now see everything below you. You can see right through it. And this is where that whole notion that God can kind of see through everybody and see everything because any being that is in their X-ray body can see anything below it as far as a wavelength is concerned because it's small enough to pass through and identify everything. That's why when you go to the doctor, they're going to scan like you can't see through your hand, right? Until we go get X-ray. And then x-ray can see right through your hand. So this is what you need to understand about these quote unquote frequencies off to the left. We ain't even gonna use the higher or lower thing. Off to the left, the power and the magnitude is so high that it can see through things. 
But also that same power and magnitude means that there are other things that are not present. And I'll talk about that here in a moment. But it's again using the electromagnetic spectrum and the actual energy behavior of the, the actual uh, uh, components on that spectrum to determine what are we talking about when we're talking about spirituality or most importantly, when we talk about light work. Because how can a person be any kind of light worker without even understanding the principles of light? This is the kind of stuff going on, right? This is why ding, ding, ding. Like, yo, why aren't you retired yet? Well, because, <laughs> you know, we, we're going to keep breaking it down a little bit more until it actually starts becoming, it just clicks. And then after, after a while, it sets a bar. And then anybody who's not talking about how it all operates, because there's plenty to elaborate on with this, but it just are all off in another neck of the woods of things that won't even benefit up. Let me tell you about the technology on the Anunnaki spacecraft when they were flying from here to Mars, and then they hijacked and blew up their ship in Roswell, and me and Cody were on the ground, and then all of the, the, the alien greys, they came out and they probed us, and it's like, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> what am I getting from this? Do I get the probe? You, you got a code? Do I get a card, VIP access, something to the alien technology? What? what? What do I get? And you'll find that it has been so many years that have gone by and most of absolutely nothing has been reaped from any of this knowledge about all these special extraterrestrial aliens and gods and their knowledge. Because no one has ever been able to really ground that stuff into 2024 and make it relevant to us, not some other thing, because it for sure happened in a time where this knowledge was like, oh, man, this is this got hijacked for real. This is this became somebody's whole lineage. This is us. This is who we are. We're the light workers. We're the Illuminati. OK, so look at what happened. The reason why you don't know about it is this. <laughs> you don't know about it because of this. What am I showing you? Well, when you bank right in this case, since it fits and you go into the red, which becomes the infrared, right? Nobody knows about the entities too much of what goes on in there because that's all devils and all demons in there. They are all red. They got red eyes and pitchforks. <laughs> we ever, we don't know. That's where you're going to go. That's where you're going to go if you're bad. So literally, our highest levels of knowledge was used as a, <laughs> a carrot and stick in a chair, a, 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 ch a check and balance system for basically an immature society. Infrared is evil. It's the red devil demon. And then next door, ultraviolet. <laughs> That's why they show you the ghost. Every time you see the ghost, he's glowing. He's translucent. Now go get a black light, which is ultraviolet <laughs> and look at yourself and look at your clothes and look at everybody. You know, when they do the black light video, y'all love that. Now it's like, damn, that looks so cool. It looks like a ghost because that's what you look like in ultraviolet. That's what the spectrum looks like, if you may. But what I'm pointing out here is, is that instead of giving the knowledge about what was discovered, because factually, the, in the Royal Society, let me tell you who, because sometimes you're like, man, you know, they, who is they? Let, let's, let's talk about who they is. Let's get it up on the screen. I'm having fun tonight. I do, I do miss it. I got a love for it. I, got, I just, I have a hunger for vast levels of knowledge. Help me. Actually, don't. <laughs> I'm good. So look at it and read it for yourself. Give me one quick moment here. Let me just find my notes. So I'm just not reading to you like, you know, like a bedtime story here. Who are, who are we talking about? The who's who? The, basically the Jeffrey Epstein flight log of the occult world. Newton. Everybody knows him. Mathematics, physics, astronomer, author. Masonic Lodge in Edinburgh. Desigirlis, the French philosopher, inventor, the key figure early in the development of Freemasonry in England. 
Bacon, statesman, scientist, philosopher, Rosicrucian, Arbendot, the Scottish physician, mathematician, and writer, the member of the Sklubler's Club, and his ties to Freemasonry. Moray, the Scottish soldier and statesman, the natural philosopher, the a founding member of the Royal Society. Here's a link to the Royal Society. We're going to put this up on the screen real quick. Ashmole, who was the English antiquary, the politician and the founder and the member of the Royal Society. Wren, who's the English architect and mathematician and astronomer of the Royal Society and Freemason. Presley, who's the English chemist and philosopher and theologian. And the reason why these names are singled out is because these names are the foundations to all of the learning institutions that came in the future. AI was just scraping all of it. Like, it's these guys. I was like, AI, just don't tell on them like that. Okay, tell me more. <laughs> it's them. Because <laughs> you just got to know how to prompt now. Now I just prompt like, tell me exactly this. And then you see it has a few more, Corderant, philosopher, mathematician, uh, 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 and political, right? So you always see that connection between philosophy, math, science, and politics. And they, of course, wrote the encyclopedia. Okay, now let's go to the site real quick. Let's just see it as it is, because they are telling the truth. But now they're hoping everybody just wants to join and will never get in. Right. This is what we're at right now. It's sickening. It's disgusting. Right. You see the Cardi Playboy and then the fake Kanye Christ. And then folks just there like, ah, oh, yeah, it's just it's so whack. Right. And they're just encouraging everybody to, yeah, you want to be a part of this. You know, you want to be a part of Warhol. You want to be a part of this merch. And, 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 and it's fast and you want to be a part of all this, right? And because we, you know, we the Illuminati, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, serious? <laughs> Do you really think that who and what we're talking about will even allow you around? <laughs> Let's go into who we're talking about. This is the Royal Society of London. This is the ancient and the accepted Royal Ark of Freemasonry. And just skimming over this, you see, okay, this is the founders of the Royal Society. You see the crest, okay? This is the entrance to the Royal Society, right? You have John Evelyn here, who was the founder of the Royal Society. And then as you scr scrim through it, you learn that they were the Invisible College. So they're very blunt because we know the Invisible College, as it's quoted in the text, is the Illuminati. It's called the Invisible College because you will be recruited without you even knowing you're being recruited. Like there will be something that starts speaking to your mind about knowledge. That was the original Invisible College. It was Gnosticism, right? But then they take, they, they take the words and patent the words. They take the words and they, uh, uh, what do you call it? Trademark the words. They get the PR on the words because the words will be used in what? The future. And what do they know? The future. How? Because that's what learning to build does. But this learning how to build does it on an entirely different level. And we'll get to that in just a moment because it involves actually getting out of the body and realizing that there is an out of the body. And this diagram that you're seeing here is like the ones that we were looking at earlier, but it's for a different group. You get where I'm coming from? But the blueprint needs to be present because the blueprint itself has the power. The blueprint itself in contemplation, that's what I'm saying, contemplation of the pyramid and contemplation of the temples of Angkor Wat, one can reach enlightenment. But there needs to be a legend. A legend is on a map and it shows you this is what these symbols mean. And how you understand it is a legend is like a legacy. It's like what will live on forever, right? So there's a legend or a lure here. Let's go back a little bit. 
So just to understand, they're not playing with you and explaining to you that everything was developed by these societies. And these societies wrote all of the books about specifically first building and mathematics. And that knowledge of building and mathematics, as they call it, Solomon's house, is about the construction of the body on the electromagnetic spectrum and the other entities that exist within those planes and also our double, meaning how to actually even manipulate our other bodies on other planes. So this is all known, but then, let me just put it in real quick. Once it's known, everybody keeps silent about it. Let me show you one of the books that will show, will it won't ever, it won't tell you the secret. It will just tell you that the seek that the, that the churches contain or the temples contain the secrets. Give me one second here. And this is Los Cathedrals or Las, Les Cathedrals, right? This was the French book. It just means the cathedrals. And it's actually on archive.org. Anybody can find it. And what it is, it's a book about the geometry within the temples. And it shows that, hey, man, something is going on with these temples, these, especially these cathedrals. And this knowledge that's encoded within these cathedrals is actually the key to the philosopher's stone. And we're gonna read this just from the end of Les Cathedrals, which is the sign out of the author. And it says, by constant exercise of the faculties of observation and reasoning and by meditation, the novice will climb the steps leading to knowledge. A simple imitation of natural processes Skill combined with ingenuity, the insight born of long experience will secure for him the power. Having obtained that, <laughs> he will still have need of patience. That means just because you get power, don't think you've actually got it all. Because you will have to have a constancy an unshakable will to not get bent into another hijack or religion or offer or 1 million subscriber bullshit chain of followers or whatever to take you off of what still needs to happen. You must be brave and resolute. And then he will be enabled by the, the certainty and confidence born of a strong faith to dare. Okay, so we still ain't even done yet. Finally, when success has crowned so many years of labor, this is labor within oneself. This is the great work. This is the great arcana. It is a reference to Solomon's temple. Solomon's temple is the body. It's how to perform the alchemical procedure on yourself. Then what? When his desires have been accomplished, the wise man, despising the vanities of the world, will draw near to the humble, the disinherited, to all those who work and suffer and struggle and weep here below, as an anonymous and dumb disciple of eternal nature, an apostle of the eternity, eternal charity, which is to basically tend the garden, to be the guardian over your beloved. He will remain faithful to his vow of silence in science and in goodness. The debt must evermore keep silent. Now that last rule was the addition of the enlightenment era. The enlightenment or the age of enlightenment decided to take the knowledge and take the wisdom and keep silent about all of what they discovered. It has to do with the vacuum chamber, like how things behave when there's no oxygen present, when you take it down atmospheres. It has to do with extracting essence from nature, meaning what you would call distillation. This is what the Olympics are about. 
You can literally extract the soul or essence of a plant. You can also come to the awareness of the sizes of the organs within the body and how the sizes of the organs are specific and you design your limbics and your, your vessels and your chambers and your vacuums in the same ratios in order to bring life and abundance into everything, every application. This is like the philosopher stone for real. This is the St. Germain stuff. But what it mainly has to do with is getting through the bridge. So we're gonna elaborate on this a little bit further because one can never traverse the bridge in division. And this is why for sure the society keeps up the division. They love everybody to be in the division and the religions perpetuate the division because there's always an antithesis in every single religion. There's someone or something to hate and it breeds the person with hatred towards something that they can't see. And that works perfect for how the electromagnetic spectrum works because most things are not visible. And in that they fall into error. And when you break the bridge, which just means that you, you sever the line of communication, you are no longer basically harmonic. So, cause you need to understand harmony. Let me just break this down because I, I don't think that everybody gets what harmony is just like they don't really get what love really is and all that kind of stuff. So let me explain to you what you're really looking at because I had to go deeper and I came to be aware of the fact that this particular spectrum is actually what we call emotions, meaning the visual spectrum is emotions. This is like the emotional body, okay? That's what reality is. It's actually emotions because the impact that these colors specifically have, and I'm just gonna paste some stuff here into all the chats, the impact specifically that these colors have also in light therapy is that predominantly of an emotional subset. Let me see where my chat is over here. Let me see here. Uh, music code chat. There we go. Okay. So let's just start blasting this stuff. Okay. So I've spread out the emotional bodies. There's generally six emotions, right? And I found a seventh after like, you know, really, really expunging all the data sets and saying, could there be potentially one more emotion just to make it all fit, right? So let, we could be six, we wouldn't have to make it fit, but you need to understand that there's predominantly seven emotions in the reality. The general consensus says six. And that these emotions, they're like I Ching in a way that they breed the next emotion. So it's like, again, the happiness, the sadness, the yin yang, the ping pong game. And so still though, remember that the biggest thing inside of these physical realities is the emotional subset because it's the emotional subset that almost in itself lodges the beam or the light form into the reality itself. And that's why all master levels of teaching teach you how to turn off the emotional center. Okay. You can't use it. Like it's, it's basically like it's, it's great for, okay. So let me show let me tell you what it's great for. First of all, now, right away, what you would come to assume from this chart is that also from your position on the visceral visible spectrum, you are naturally more powerful, you know, in, in that way of or over what's infrared beings, microwave beings, FM beings, AM beings, and long wave beams, okay? And so how that works is, is that while FM signals and everything are in the air, it takes a large amount of them, almost to the point, almost at the scale that is not possible for it to completely bombard and override our consciousness because of where we sit on the bridge. 
So that's when they were talking about how like humans were more powerful than demons. This is really what that boils down to is that everything underneath you, you have dominion of, you don't have to be afraid of at all. And I'm going to tell you what fear is here in a moment too. So basically in this range, you don't have to be really worried about anything, even though some of the more grotesque things do exist down in here, but they would, they're never as more powerful than the light body, visible spectrum being. It, it almost even burns them to be around you, just so you understand where we're at on the spectrum. However, what you also have to know though is, is that who you think you are dissolves around the X-ray gamma ray point. What am I talking about? Okay. So we use UV light. X-ray is even too powerful. Gamma ray is overkill to completely deform and rupture and destroy DNA. That is how UV light is used to kill bacteria in water. Go study it. We use UV light, primarily UVA, not UVB, UVC, those are weaker ones. UVC is like that pin, with that pin that is a UV light pin, or like the one that they use to see blood and stuff. And then when you get into UVA, if you point that at your skin for a long time, it will burn your skin, right? Especially based on the amplitude. But it won't just burn your skin. <laughs> if you have DNA right there on the skin or in the Petri dish, the DNA will bend or deform. So once it reach X-ray and gamma ray, it will completely rupture and disperse. And because all of our memories from the matrix are technically within the DNA, you can see that gamma is gamma and beyond and cosmic, even in the X-ray are coded, hard coded for us not to be able to take our memories and stories into them. Okay. This is how it protects itself from the taintedness of what could come from the emotional body. This is a fail safe. This is what makes sure that you always reanimate. You will never die. You will always continue to live on. But also you could see what someone coming back to the reality would look like. It means they would go around the spectrum and then they would hit the wavelength again, the visible wavelength, and they wouldn't know how to pass through that wavelength because they literally would start running back into what? their memories because one of the things i also found out and this is the next part of fringe and y'all may want to stay tuned for this is that when you deform dna at the uv level you also leave the channel open to repair it which would activate dormant dna okay so this is like the highest level of fringe because it's like the light room, literally, of reconstruction of DNA, but you have to know how to guide the waves. And so technically, even if you were to perform this on yourself, this would not be something that you would want to do with anything imperfect around you, or else you would close your DNA chain with that imperfection. So this is a hands off, you know, nobody's allowed beyond this door kind of reality anyway, when you start getting into real light work in that UV X-ray DNA movement story snatching flashy thingy realm. Okay. But this is what you need to understand about these wavelengths because some we need to be like, yo, I'm headed to gamma. I'm out of here. <laughs> and we'll never see you again. Not at least as you left <laughs> because you're literally flying into what your memories can't even hold together in. So this means you would need to find a different level of containment of awareness of what you are. And this is why this becomes so important because if you don't get familiar with first, you knock on next door. This is what I would advise. These are the closest to be understood. It's probably why when they were going into the sun temples, they were finding dark rooms that the Kazakhs were in for weeks upon end 
with no light so they can start seeing IR. This is also the dark room experiment. Anybody can do it. Two weeks, maybe less, no light. People feeding you under the door, not even a glimmer. Your eyes begin to adjust and your whole array system readjusts. And now you can see infrareds. You see what I mean? And then that infrared spectrum is right next door. So that's like root chakra stuff. So the mastery over the infrared is also in itself like a mastery over the closest, most adjacent uh, reality of power or vehicle that could be most effective in the physical reality. So the ch root chakra by generally most meditative masters is where they begin. They don't begin in the crown chakra because the root chakra is going to have the most ability to then affect the visual, visible spectrum of light. So real powers, like as far as real powers are determined by people can see it. So one will work on their root chakra to start learning how to move objects and things in physical reality because it is the infrared waves that are the closest to the visible spectrum of light and thus allow it to actually interact. So when you start, because you have infrared coming off of your body and in your body, that's your BTU. That's what's regulating whether you're hot or cold or that constant regulation of your temperature. I also, for those who may have to pull off, I put some suggestions inside of the comments. One of them is the human charger because it uses photobiomodulation to charge the human right from the skin because the skin in itself is nothing more than, well, I won't even demote it like that. It's actually quite great, a solar panel. As we know, technology, once again, same code, same, same, same blueprint that we gave everybody. Technology is a plagiarization from spirituality. Spirituality is a mimic of physicality, as we're going to learn here in a moment. And very specifically, the skin or the derma or the dream is what is absorbing lights and then converting those lights to technically the mineral sets that you're needing in your higher faculties that power your higher faculties. As I said before, they're not powering themselves on that chicken. They're not powering themselves on them, them chips and them Doritos and all that stuff. It's powering itself off the conversion of light. And now all of that light is coming off the sun. In fact, when you study it, because many will immediately go to, yeah, that's sun gazing. But when you study it, the sun is not beneficial all day for the human being. It's generally early in the morning and right at sunset. It hits around UVA or excuse me, UVC at a certain spectrum. And then that one, that was the golden one, right? That's what I call the golden hour, right? That's where the bridge actually is. But other than that, the sun is in other wavelengths that actually are a bit harmful to the body. And that's why the body can become cancerous even with too much exposure to this specific wavelength of light. But then we find out that infrared light, just to prove factually what I'm talking about, which is what we have to do, near infrared light penetrates all the way down, as you're seeing here in this chart, the near infrared light pierces down through the epidermis, the dermis, the subcutaneous tissue, the muscle, the bone, and then the deep tissue, right? Why can it do that? Because it has this ability of basically what we would say is like resonance. And when that light touches you, the, the blood, so how your body works is the blood, even if you put the light, I put it on my thigh because that's like the biggest area, right? There's a lot of blood moving through there. And within, I would say, less than five to 10 minutes, all the blood in the body has moved across that area because your blood is in constant circulation. And when it moves by these, this light, it charges. <laughs> It, that's how it works. And on top of that, if you want to get even further breakdown of some of the discoveries that are like not even discoveries anymore because they're so old, it was the ability to take a UV, a UVB or a UVC light, point it at a green plant in the darkness without any el anything else beside that UV, UVB and UVC light and watch the plant begin to develop vitamin D inside of the plant. And then be able to even extract the vitamin D that was developed inside of the plant and have it right there on the beaker as like a little bit of white powder to show you can convert from light minerals. 
So basically that there's a whole nother level of, of health, a whole nother level of regeneration that hasn't even been really explored because they've been hiding it because light is very cheap. <laughs> That's just the thing about this. It's like a one-time application in that way. And so, but it's more to it. It's not even that it's just cheap. Light does other things. Information is coming down these light channels and through these light channels. And because we are the ultimate resonator, we are the ultimate carrier, because even as I did deeper research and I started coming into Phantachon light emission tubes, radio systems, uh, uh, what we would call um, plate antenna, or, or, or what we call patch antennas, which is what's in your cell phone, metamaterials, nano, nano, uh, um, nano metamaterial patterns that have higher bandwidths. Even when we was all in all that, it still was very clear that still the most powerful, what I would say is universal receiver to all of these realms is none other than the human body. That because we have resonators to all of these wavelengths, including gamma running through our vehicle, that we are the carriers and that that's exactly what was happening with the human beings is that they, the vessels of the human beings were technically being used to manipulate the reality of that person. And thus the reality that we all begin to collectively project as we begin to intertwine and intermingle with each other, sowing weaves of light, like light weavers, and, but still nobody really being aware of what is going on truly. And that's where the whole asleep thing comes from. It's just knowledge is real power in this case, in the instance, in the application of it is wisdom and having it because your mind, body, soul is really interconnected. Even when you're in a dream or on the astral plane, you will recall certain knowledge and be like, oh shoot, I must be in infrared zone. No different than the dream warriors will say, hey, when you're walking down in the dream, you're going to the netherworld. Try to keep walking up and let's just work on that for a while. You see what I mean? So understanding when you're walking in this context down, you're going into infrared, you're going into radio wave, microwave, long wave, right? All primordial stuff. Versus when you're going up the ladder, as you're going up into your head, you're now you're going in the UV. Now you're going up there in the cosmos. You see what I mean? And then also understanding why you can't take memories, why you can't take id or ID, ID of, or identity of who you think that you are. Also, understanding that, now let's just keep going with this because you know we, we're still laying it thick here. It's not over. Understanding again that because the emotional body then is the visible spectrum that sex, for lack of better terms, is the most powerful way of interacting with the wavelength. So in that way, it becomes the gift and the curse. Why is it the most powerful way of interacting with the wavelength? Because it slides through the entire oscillation scale. From the time it begins to the time it ends, it will have worked its way from a long wave all the way into the cosmos and back. It takes a person in their orgasm, if it, everything is completed properly, it takes a person literally from basically a standing column wave all the way into basically opening up the gap, which is where an electron will then become a single cell life form or organism you're opening up a portal. This is the easiest way to explain it. Once you reach the complete spectrum, and this is what this whole, the Ankh and all that, all this is about, once you do one complete perfect circuit, the portal will open. And when that portal opens, the philosopher's stone, the panacea is there at the door. It's like you, you, you get exposed to it. And then the door closes again, and then it goes into another cycle. But now you've been like, illuminated or enlightened <laughs> in that way. And this is a real thing. And then the body goes through its circuits again. But again, if you are stuck in duality, stuck in the visible wavelength only, your vehicles are basically parked. It looks like you're asleep somewhere. You're only trying to access just what you have in random access memory, seven sphere, seven color prism, 
or prison cycles. You only have just this and then you're basing everything about what you are on this and you're making your final decisions, who you worship, all this kind of stuff. And, and you're only been given like so small of a piece of what it really is and you're making a decision on that. And that's how they're catching people. That's how they're getting fooled because it's like, if they only present to you certain options and then you, don't, you think those are the only options that exist, it's very easy for you then to choose wrong because those are just what was presented to you when most of everything, as we call it, the invisible organ, exists in a wavelength that you can't even see it. It's not visible. So let's finalize here. I want to go through a couple things. So the who's who, as we spoke of earlier, their creations, if you may, or plagiarizations for lack of better terms, since we know the foundations to this knowledge since 1660. Christopher Wren, Robert Mulray, and all the rest of the guys, the usual suspects we were talking about earlier in developing not only the Royal Society, but also the encyclopedia, which then kind of laid out, oh, this is who created this, this is what this is. And then the Newtonian physics, right, which is now the space shuttles and rocket propulsion and all of that. And then calculus, which is another level of math. Most of y'all didn't make it to calculus after algebra, right? And then the United States of America itself, because that was another projection in, you know, Washington, Benjamin Franklin, everyone being a Freemason. Then the metric system, right? This is the units of measurements that people are using to scale and to understand how to measure things. This is the modern chemistry. This is then for them the discovery of all of these elements and gases, including oxygen. That had to be a big one. Like we breathe it, but imagine somebody figured out how to put it in a tank and that it actually even existed and what even uh, uh, calibration or formula of oxygen that we need, right? We need oxygen mixed with nitrogen, right? So we know hey, this is how we could go subterranean and still exist inside the physical body by capturing this gas, this entity, and breathing this entity to keep us alive. So you see how like before for, for the ancients, these everything had a life to it. It was the energy, it was a spirit. You see what I mean? So they, they, they became familiar with it in that way. In modern times, like I said, when I'm saying, hey, we can trap this gas into a jar and then keep breathing on it when we're in an area without no oxygen and it will keep us alive. That was similar to saying like that you had an entity that you could use that was in this bottle and he would keep you alive even deep underwater. You see what I mean? But it did go further, though. I'm not just trying to draw parodies here because everything that I would be connecting to these minuscule pea brains would still be stepped down so far that it would just be bringing it into its physical applications. I can tell you the, the sheer ability for us to be here in this already tells you, tells you the level of intelligence of the design. So this wasn't something stupid creating something smart. It's not possible. It was more of vice versa. Something so vast, something so intelligent, the only way that it could really understand itself was to start breaking itself apart. Like you would take a very complex thing and start trying to take it piece by piece until you comprehend it. And that's what we're doing now. So this procedure and this process is known. What did they know? Again, this is what your ancestors knew. The golden ratio. Mathematically, the golden ratio is an irrational number approximated at 1.618. It is defined as the ratio where the whole is the larger part as the larger part is the smaller part. Huh? There are people that say that stuff and it'd be like, oh, okay, I get it. Let's go. Yeah, golden ratio. I got it. And we know most people didn't get it. What are they saying? Simply, as above, so below. As it's saying, it is defined as a ratio where the whole, meaning the whole thing to, to the larger part, at, let's read it again. It is defined as a ratio where the whole is to the larger part as the larger part is to the smaller part. So this is the awareness of a microcosm and a macrocosm being identical. 
Let's finish reading it. The golden ratio is found in various aspects of nature, such as the spiral arrangement of leaves and the proportions of the human body. This distance here is the same distance as your foot. Put your, put your foot down there. So if you ever wanna know how big a person's foot is, you just measure this area right here. So this kind of knowledge, this is what the Kabbalah is because you can figure out what the rest of the proportions of everything else, how tall they were, just by one little piece of the bone, okay? This is what we're talking about. That's what the golden ratio ends up allowing you to do and more. We also have the Visica Pisces, okay? This is the shape that, and I don't want to, I don't even have the shapes because we talk about them so much. Everybody can even visualize them. Then we know them, we see them all the time, but let's just break them down for what they really are and what, what it would do, okay? So we have this shape is formed by the two intersections of two equal size circles where the center of each circle lies on the circumference of the other. Okay, so that's this, right? The ratio of the Visica Pisces is the width to, it, to its width is the square root of three, approximately 1.732058. Okay, I sound smart, but I don't know what that means. Let's keep going. In the Masonic ritual, the Visica Pisces represents the intersection of the material worlds and the spiritual worlds, as well as the principles of duality and unity. Ah, okay, the sacred cut. That's what it's actually called. At that 1.73, there is a opening. This is what I'm showing here. There is an opening in the realm. And every time you, every time mathematically you know where that is, you will find the intersection between the physical and the spiritual reality, the portal. So knowing the sacred cut allows you to know. So where's the gate between physical in non-physical act, so I can promptly disappear. <laughs> you see what I mean? That's what they knew. They knew that there was a, there was, because remember at that point, what's there? Why is it so important to know that? Because that's the door. That's where the golden door opens. That's where this panacea is. That's where this zero point is, if you may. This intersecting between the realms, the pentagram. Right. This is just OK. So what is in these societies? What do they know? What is their what is their top things that they understand from a geometric level to be the maxims? And what are they? This is that list. This is the pentagram. The pentagram is a five pointed star. It's a polygon when drawn with a single continuous line. It forms a pentagon in the center. OK, I get it. <laughs> what did I get? OK, let's try again. The ratio of the length of the pentagram side to the length of the inner pentagon side is equal to the golden ratio. Oh, OK, I, I, the golden ratio again. I remember that. OK, um, hit me with that one more time. Um, in the Masonic symbolism, the pentagram represents the five elements, the five senses, the five virtues, the masonry, the brotherhood. OK, all right. All right. That's kind of the hijack. What are we talking about? <gasps> this proves that man is the macrocosm and the microcosm. Basically, the pentagram, because it encodes the golden ratio, and because the pentagram can be connected to phi, and that's, of course, the human body, that basically the human body, oh my goodness, the human body is encoding, wait a minute, this literally proves, and that's what I was saying earlier, Don't not meaning to have the aha moment on you again, but it proves that this wavelength that we're in, the visible microcosmic wavelength is formed based on emotions. These emotions specifically, and I copied them earlier, were, and let me just read them off the list, because that's what I'm saying. So if you think about what makes us human, it's our emotions. When you really get down to the nitty gritty of what makes us tick, what is so different from us, even than all the other beings, very subtle. Like I see being, I see animals fight, but I don't really see a lot of the animals laugh <laughs> and crack jokes and play jokes on each other. You see what I mean? So there's a sensory set that is emotional that we have that 
Other things simply don't have, and that makes up the reality for us. Okay, so we're going to continue here. All right, yeah, let me just continue, okay, because I got so many notes. My notes is like an infinite scroll. I'm just like, all right, just forget it. All right, so you get it. The emotional body is the reality, but let's keep going. We have then, we talked about it earlier. We talked about the square and the compass, right, and then everything that rolls into that. So if we take these symbols, the golden mean, the golden ratio, the Visica Pisces, the pentagram, and the square and the compass, and we bring them into exactly what they mean, then we come into realizing that, wait a minute, the secrets and the mysteries to the entire matrix had already been cracked. Not only through mathematics, not only through music, not only through electronics, but the main big lift that didn't happen even though we created all these external advanced technologies is the ability for the human to benefit from this for us not to die because see this is what this ultimately reveals and this will is where my fun some will call it work will continue is that what this proves is there's a sweet spot to reality where time doesn't have much of any effect. And this is why, you know, it was quoted that some of these beings would say that they're outside of time because they actually are. They're out of these wavelengths or in these higher wavelengths that make time really irrelevant. And that in that way, they stayed in almost a perpetual perfect state. And where we are is we're moving, we're in motion in time. And this is why we see our ancient temples as crumbled and eroded and basically not in use. But that's not where they really are. These temples sit in a space that they are in their perpetual state of when they were originally built, because that's what they are. And where we're at, and let me just, exp I only can explain this through the obelisk. Like, cause how, so how do you move beings from time or through time like how would you put beings in time and then you're like outside of time in that way i can only reveal that through the symbol of the obelisk first let me show you this image and it was the one of the images prepared for tonight but somehow it did not get uploaded let me go ahead and get it in and this is to let you understand that a stone mason, because remember they, that the temple of Solomon was built by demons, okay? This is what they say, right? But this is cryptic. This explains, like I said, the infrared relationship between what is going on inside of the geometry, the body, and the temples and the structures that are being built, and what happens to a person when they stand in these places, and how these places can be reconfigured. Let me throw this up on the screen. So this is what you need to understand about the guilds of the builders, right? So here was one simple chart, okay? It shows all of the principal high buildings. This is what they used to call the high places, right? They built their temples in the high places, right? But these high place temples are configured specifically on a certain geometry, okay? And this geometry not only encodes the secret of how to basically how, how to create the door, how to find the door within yourself. But many of these physical structures have doors in them, meaning that they have places inside of them that, you know how I'd be showing you on a movie, but he walked through the door and there was no door there. And they're like, what's going on? And then they comes to another door and then now he's in another reality. How this is all possible. And again, it's also to pay attention because you gotta pay attention sometimes even if you don't feel like necessarily the smartest person, you can measure everything else based on your ignorance. When you would try to construct something like these arcs, yourself personally, you would fall into utter ruin as far as your attitude and your being mad at yourself because it would be virtually impossible for you to understand how to do this unless you had some real skill. This is even why they don't build like this today. 
Nobody is trying to throw these certain degree arcs that all got to be standing on themselves. And, you know, there's a sound thing also going on in all these temples, right? And this is, again, you could check out the work Let's Cathedrals for more than that. But what I'm bringing light to right now is this. And why outside of all of these neo structures, neo modern, or we could say old world still, but neo modern structures, because they are not the same as the megalithic temples, but they often contain always obelisks, right? Like even the the the, the Washington Monument, it all they all have the the obelisk out there. So what is an obelisk? Let me show you. What is encoded in the obelisk? The obelisk. They're tall, four-sided, narrow, tapering monuments that end in a pyramid-like shape at the top. They're known to incorporate several geometric and mathematical principles in their design. Check. One, the obelisk is a monolithic four-sided pillar that tapers gradually from its base to its top, ending in a pyramidion. A small period, a pyramid at the top of the apex. The four sides of the obelisk are typically trapezoidal in shape. Got it. The proportions. The obelisks are often designed with specific proportions. The height of the obelisk is usually about 10 times the width at its base. Okay. And I'm going to stop here just so you understand. There's an encoding happening here for a reason, and that reason may not be as obvious, but it is encoded within its general use as a sundial, okay? And it's because it was known in order to create a space and a time, you needed something that could record both of those. So it's like, if we land, if, if we're, if we're, if we're going to create time and space as, as something physical would understand time and space, we only need to bring something in that records time and space through its principles. So it's like the sheer presence of certain temples give you time and space because they're already marking time and space. It's the thing that we discovered with even the popes, when they wanted to take claim over lands, including the air, they created things that can mark out the space and the time in those domains. So we even got it down to if you wanted to like basically create your own domain in reality, you only needed to look no further than a 3D printed sundial technically on your own property and for it to re record the space and the time once you marked the corners of the property, the north, the east, the south, the west of the property, and then the sundial is placed. Because what is this doing, okay? What it's doing is it's now equating the 10 base time unit, which is the cubit. So basically, the same reason why it's $5, $10, 15 20 and generally all the denominations in the reality are by 10 in that base 10. This proportion gives the obelisk its characteristics of the slender and tall appearance, which is actually how humans are. They're the slender and the tall ones. They have the golden ratio. Some obelisks are designed to incorporate the golden ratio, approximately 1.618 in their proportions. This means that the ratio of the height of the obelisk is to the width of the base close to the gold, it, it, the base is close to the golden ratio. So that pyramidion on the top. As it says here, the pyramid on the top of the obelisk is a small pyramid that caps the monument, but the angles and the proportions of the pyramid are designed to match the overall proportions of the obelisk, just like the human body. So all of the power that the obelisk can pull from its base, it puts into the pyramid in its top, that top becoming a very consecrated point, an opening, a portal. It's like an electrostatic portal because the obelisk is simply placed on a ley line. As we discovered that the skin, and we got to put this into the build too, because you know, all of this was kind of a collect, some of this was a collective of previous bills just over the last two weeks, but it must be imperative for, it's imperative for everybody to understand that, okay, if the human body is the earth, 
Microcosm, macrocosm. The skin is the surface of the earth, okay? So let's pull all the skin off of a human body and then wrap it around the earth, okay? What we would get then is the awareness that one, there are latitudinal and longitudinal lines running across the body. We call those the meridians, right? And then that there are specific points on the body that are nodes, portals, if you may, to specific areas of the regions of the body. Earth has those two. This means Earth has real gateways, you know, whether it's the uh, Temple of Uluru and all the other chakra points, the Mount Shasta. If that's correct, then that's correct. But that's where the knowledge comes from that we have these openings. So does Earth. So you could find them. <laughs> there's every single orifice that you have in your body. There's a part on earth that corresponds to that. Then it also laid out that then the body again, having latitudinal and longitudinal lines that those are really ley lines and that ley lines have up shoots and down shoots, meaning an area where stuff is blowing out. So if you were there, you would be getting filled with whatever kind of energy is present in that sector. Just like inside of your body, there, the spleen doesn't do the same thing as the liver does. The brain synthesizes, certain parts of the brain synthesizes certain liquids and fuels. So all these things do stuff different. So when you went to that specific place on the planet or on your body, that element would be emitting from that area. Okay, so you have these latitudinal, longitudinal, or ley lines, and that these ley lines had upshoots and downshoots, and that there was horizontal and vertical crossings on the vector. So when, when a line goes horizontal and then vertical and they connect in that cross point, that cross point or that vector is the generation of life, i.e. a portal. So wherever two opposing forces, which is what the whole thing about the Mount of Harman was about and why many of these entities were opposites from each other. It was to create the same thing that you see on a piano where there are two different keys that are opposite from each other on the piano. But the pianist, the orchestrator knows how to make all these keys blend together so that it actually makes really great sounds and tones. So frequencies that will otherwise clash if not played properly by a skilled orator or whatever you want to give them the term of, because that's really more of like a, what a, a, a magus or a magician or anybody is, is that they know how to blend the conflictive components to working together to actually creating something beautiful. You get it? So every time someone's always like talking about what the bad one is, it just means that they don't really understand how that gets mixed into the good one and how it actually starts creating a, ba a balance and a harmonic tone. You see what I mean? And then that the skills truly that you're looking to inherit here while in this space in this time is the ability to do just that internally. And that it doesn't matter if everything else around you is not doing it or is doing it you would still need to figure out how to do it yourself. But if the reality is constantly throwing you into all this diversity and can't really connect all this stuff and show you how it all really harmonizes together and takes you through even the story of when someone distorted, hijacked it, and then tried to use it for their own means, and then it loses its meaning. Just as we know that the symbols and the language are our guideposts. They are the true legends of the reality. And if we don't have them, then we would be lost. So when someone confuses the symbolism and misconstrues the symbolism, thus we become confused and conscrewed too. And that's just how it works. That's just how interwoven everything is. And you learn simple stuff like that from the secret and all that. Oh, what you think you manifest and all this kind of stuff. But it just gets way more deeper when you start talking about where is that point of manifestation? How do I go through the process of, let's say, new moon to full moon with keeping my energy in a certain type of state where it can produce abundance versus thorns and thistles, right? 
How do I, again, dodge the hijack? There are occultists on the realm that use all these powers in an inverted way. They know how to use it exactly against a person, just like they will give alcohol to a Native American. They'll give uh, 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 cocaine to a Caucasian and, and, and they'll give some. You see what I mean? So they had they know, hey, this is this is where your weakness is. <laughs> you see what I mean? And they'll exploit that weakness versus for us. The weakness was the other spectrum strength. And we just held space, our own space. So if I'm green, I'm green. And that's that's what I'm doing. And I understand the connections between ultraviolet, red, and all the rest of what's on the spectrum. And also, I'm not just green, even though I'm holding my space, like I'm teaching second graders. Then I'm also a light body. I'm an ultraviolet X-ray gamma beam. Like I can glance into the entire reality. It's past. The great mother, the great serpents, Tiamat, the long waves, all the primordial forms. And then I also can be present inside of my emotional body, which gives me access to all of the wavelengths or the bridges of the visible, visible spectrum and its experience. How to love, you know, how to how to love, how to hate, how to have joy, how to be angry, how to have fear. Right. So that I can get acclimated with those things so that I can understand how to actually bring them in balance and why I would prefer sitting maybe in ultraviolet at certain parts of the time of the year. And then when seasons switch charging in infrared for the rest of the year and why it would be important for me to take and spend as much time with my body and my knowledge and my wisdom as I would with Netflix or something that also demands two to three hours of time out of my day. Because even one hour spent into the awareness of yourself is like millions of years. And you're literally trying to just convince yourself to accept a reward and to really deprogram yourself from all of the extra, hey, I wanna say something, so here's the story I'm gonna create. You see what I mean? Rather than basing things on actual facts. And in final here, it says the alignment. The obelisks were often aligned with important astronomical events, such as the solstices and the equinoxes. This required precise calculations and the understanding of the astronomical cycles, because when you know those cycles and they're encoded around you, they bring power because their very image and that's what this whole thing is about. When you slow down the beam, you create it in its image. Now it's created in its image, but its very image holds power. No different than, you know, for lack of better terms, if I showed you a picture with me and Michael Jackson, <laughs> that picture has a little bit of power if it's real. So be like, man, you knew Mike, <laughs> you've been with Mike, even though Mike is not in that, Mike, Mike is a real person, right? Like, or he's gone now, but that picture still holds a certain level of power and a certain level of weight. So you can imagine where your ancestors really are at. But more importantly, you can imagine how you are your ancestors. And where you choose to be at on the wavelength is truly up to you now. But of course, they're gonna be shining these visible lights in your face all the time. And that means that they're just gonna be pulling your emotional cords all the time and trying to keep you in that fear so that way you don't access your other bodies. And like that, you're being controlled through your other bodies. And this is the other reason why it's so important. It's not like your Kundalini just stays there. It could be manipulated. If you don't understand what's going on with your light body, you can walk right into a concert and or right into some meditative session, especially physical stuff, and have your chakras be manipulated because you're agreeing to actually be there. You're agreeing to listen to it. You're agreeing to hear it, right? And this is just every day though. Like I said, people, you know, on a standard radio, by the beginning of the day to the end of the day, everybody has been killed, murdered, and, 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 and debased. You see what I mean? And this is what everybody's nodding their heads to. And they keep bringing these clowns literally in front of everybody. Whoever's gone the lowest 
is getting that position of leading humanity. Why? Why can't we pick the smart people to lead humanity? You understand there's something else going on here. I don't doubt a hundred percent, no different than me and you are sitting here right now, that there's not other beings sitting in infrared and sitting in some of these other wavelengths and they are just as dark and ignorant as some of these visible wavelength beings, except their ability is we can't see them unless you acknowledge your feelings and you acknowledge your power. You see what I mean? So I don't doubt at all, just like in the whole thing with the 007 and the queen and the, bo whole, the books of Enoch and all this, and them trying to talk to these entities, that something started communicating back and that it had the same level of ideals and same level of selfishness it could have been them in itself, just in another space and another time, ready to serve on a platter, another level of destruction, right? So this is the thing, and I just want to taper off here, and then we're going to go ahead and open this up. It's just that awareness. We've got 30 more minutes of just Q&A, but it's just that awareness that, so remembering all of this and what I'm explaining to you. Right now, this type of stuff is starting to seem not even important. It's getting lost. This is why we created Sybil AI. This is why we created the university. This is why we created all the things that we have now. They are monuments themselves containing this knowledge and preserving this knowledge because in the minute, see, okay, because what? Because the issue is here, originality, okay? What is also at that sacred cut door original stuff, new stuff. Nobody's ever even really talked about it, heard about it in the last million years. It's like a plot of land out in the middle of a jungle that no human has ever stepped on before. It's undiscovered territory. So that's another benefit of activating these faculties because they allow you to bring new stuff into the reality that others have, has not dawned on everybody yet. But when you cannot access those spaces, it means that you're forced to re just regurgitate, just say what everybody else is saying. And that's why for all spiritual teachers, this is masters for masters. You have to spend the time in cultivation of what you really are. Like you, you, if you have access, like there's some powerful teachers that are out here. In fact, for me, it's more like this. I look at everybody that you can think of, all your favorites. And I just asked myself the question, would a human be in a better, like let's say the standard person that doesn't know anything, would they be in a better or worse condition if they came across this person's knowledge? And in almost 90% of the cases, I say to myself, they, are, they would be in a better position. So in this way, we are all in, like le le levers on a ladder or steps on a ladder, right? However, if you're on a certain step, you gotta remember, or if you're a certain step yourself, you gotta remember you can't forfeit your trip up the ladder for everybody wanting to step on you. You have a duty and a service, but you need to also know that your duty and your service is to yourself to keep climbing, as we say. Because even what you have, if you let it go, you would have so much more. And I've been through successions like that in my life. Like when I think that I really know something and this is my hardcore dogmatic, whatever, when I let that go, something else was even bought that was even more clearer and more refined. And then I was shown, hey, you know that mind that you got, it's like your hand is closed and, and, and you got something in it and you're holding on to that for dear life. And we're trying to give you something else and your, your fist is balled up. Open your hand up, let that go and let us put something else into that hand because there's so much more for you. It's just as I was showing tonight on this chart. You have this much of the experience you've been through so far acting like a know-it-all. Do you know just in proportion if that much is there, that means pretty much everything you know is not factual in that way. You only can gravitate to the most hard coded morsels of truth. And that's why these men and women look towards this geometry in nature, 
because they didn't they didn't need to just know the, the, the minuscule aspects of things first. That was like a needle in a haystack. It was let's find the core principles that operate reality. And to that extent, they have become controllers of their framework. And the interesting part about this is, is that while many may revel against it, they sometimes don't realize in that sheer action how they are becoming a part of it. To truly create something new, you must do something different. You must think different. You must move differently. You must invent things that nobody has ever really seen before. I saw a kid today, his last name is Bukele, uh, just like the, uh, um, the president of, I believe that's Venezuela, but he has now invented what he calls the cancer uh, soap, and it removes cancer. And what it is is just elements that are act against cancer, and you know, you put it on, this kid is 13 though, <laughs> is what I'm saying, right? With the big forehead. Looking like a real star seed or something that's come here and like, look, age is not really holding me back from the obvious that transdermally, which means through the skin, you would really want to apply most healing since that's the largest organ in the body. So it's basically where the common sense starts coming back in and then the originality starts taking place. And then also we're not hanging on the Elon Musk and the NVIDIA and the open AI and all the narratives that don't care about us, don't ever say anything to us, haven't built one community center. <laughs> I, I don't see a human initiative uh, uh, bettering human beings designed by Elon Musk with billions of dollars. Like I'm still not seeing community sitters in even local in, uh, 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 small towns uh, named after football players that have come from those small towns. Everybody is missing on the action because every day they're so consumed and so busy with the external, they're not tapping into that long list of prayers or requests from lesser beings, if you may, meaning beings that have not made it as far along on the ultraviolet spectrum as you or on the electromagnetic spectrum as you that are still down there in the netherworld sending requests of any kind of morsel of light seed of newness or hope of change. Like look at India right now. We have technologies present on the planet where we can clean oceans, rivers, and everything. Nobody's lifting a finger to move that, to do that. So we have something to do here is what I'm saying. Our power still needs to reside in ideas like you'll be the first one to fly. You will show humanity that physically we can actually fly doing things that nobody has ever seen before. And they will ridicule you. They'll throw you under the bus and all that. But it won't be up to them because you're running on your own fuel. And that's what I'm trying to turn you on to right now. You have lots of friends. Your ancestors are infrared, UV, gamma, cosmic rays, long waves, radio waves, AM, FM, all those wavelengths you move through. So while we're running around, oh, 4G, oh, 5G, even though we've been using 5G routers in the house for 10 years, 20 years, by the way, 30 years almost 5G routers been sitting there, 5G sits on a wavelength so much further away from where we are we are so much more powerful than that. It would take so much 5G to affect us unless we trick our minds and to shift our bodies into the weak receptacle antenna that can be corroded by another wavelength. You see what I mean? So at the end of the day, that's how your mind, your thymus, your pineal is all controlling the light field around you. And it's determining how these frequencies and these wavelengths can affect you, how much of you they can really see. There's a part of you that even moves in mysterious waves. You can tap into that and you be moving in mysterious waves. And that's what I'm saying. Okay, so another thing I wanted to grant you here is also Moving in mysterious ways and not falling into the trap creates weird anomalies in the matrix where you can see the matrix glitch. You can see that it expected you 
to make the same pattern, the same crazy, dumb move every single time. And then that moment where you intercede on yourself and be like, you know what? I'm not doing that. I'm going to actually do this different. I'm not, I'm actually going to do it the way that I know I should be doing it. And I keep telling myself that's what I should be doing. And that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm not doing that though. I'm going to actually do it. And then when you start doing it, you'll notice something weird. The matrix will really glitch. It'll be like, wait a minute. I expected you to do that. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> it's, you know, I'm just being, I'm just being, uh, uh, putting a story around it, but it's like, sometimes, oh shit, he's, he's coming out. He's, Oh my goodness, he's not practicing duality anymore. It's, oh my goodness, he's starting to look more into the same ancient symbols again that we hid. Oh my goodness, the, he's not afraid anymore. Ah! <laughs> and who is all of that? You. You. That's what I say. I, I, I've seen the, the, uh, the uh, what did they say? I've seen the uh, 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 superhuman. He's cruel and, 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 and intrepid, right? They're talking about you. In how you've been doing yourself, and we've talked about this before, we will trap ourselves in a wavelength of misery, even with the awareness of how to get out, just to endure in it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There's a part of us that it likes to pride itself on how hard and how difficult things can be and how many struggles it's been through. And it stays in that, it stays in that victim because that's the emotional wavelength. That's a color that is so popular. You see what I mean? Everybody owe me. These are colors, these are emotions when truly you have it all. You have more than you can even really do anything with at this stage, especially in this wavelength. So the least you can do is turn it all the way up. So. I wanted to say wholeness and balance vibrations to everyone. Again, I mentioned the links that are actually in the description for some of the healing elements. We also have the link for Discord down there. We're going to open this up for here for a moment because this wasn't just a dialogue. Also, remember, this is a special series this evening. Sovereign Lounge sessions during the last about eight, or excuse me, one and a half hours. And in that, we come in, we come into Discord. Um, that's also where we are. Of course, we're doing it in Zoom now because we had a little bit of connection issues, but we're doing this every strong on Friday and we're building onto something here. So if you want to be a part, the door is open. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to turn this over to Sean so that I can go ahead and get some water real quick and refresh myself. You know, we're going to do, because I want this to bake in. It's already been two hours. We're going to do 15 minutes. So, you know, that's such a short period of time for, you know, some of the builds and things that some may want to go on right now with, some Q&A. So we asked everybody to kind of keep it into maybe, you know, just as short as possible, nothing over three minutes to give as many opportunity to speak if they want to say something. And of course, this is on the Zoom side. So if you want to dial in, then you can raise your hand. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on really briefly. So that way we can get some uh, unmuted action here. Give me one quick second. Also, I trust that you enjoyed this evening's bill, just in winding down for a moment, taking a breath, realizing that it's all in you. Like, I can't tell you enough about how to let this bake for a moment about the electromagnetic spectrum and about the other layers to your existence and how even when they're talking about this demon when they're talking about this angel and they're talking about all these other variations, these are all just different variations of yourself. And most of the time, the confusion comes in at is not realizing how you connect to these things and what they actually are. Also, understanding those gems like I dropped tonight about the gamma frequencies and how that affects memory and how that affects DNA. Because many of us have been into what you could say is other wavelengths. We've gone into a high vibration before and then really experienced not having an identity, like not knowing your name and not knowing who you are. And then all that flooding in later on when you come back into the reality as if it's contained within the body. So these are all direct hints to where our memories are being kept, where others' memories are being kept. Because remember, people are wearing their memories literally on their energy field. And as an x-ray being, you can see everybody's memories. And so that's why when a real light worker is on deck, 
they can actually see most of what's going on with the person without them even saying anything. But this is where that comes in at. It comes in with you first learning how to charge your, your base field, like your base field, that red field, that infrared, that's the field that is primary to understand how to charge and how to operate in order to get those subsequent fields like the orange and then the, the, the gold or the yellow and then into the blues and then into the, the indigos and the violets. So all of that is not just this theoretical chakra meditation. It is actually explaining to you that you're activating these different layers of your electromagnetic spectrum. Why would you want to do that? Because you need to rediscover communication with yourself. There's other parts of you that are stranded technically out on these other wavelengths. They have no, well, actually I'll say that this one inside of the physical reality is the one stranded. And these, that's why I said, this is more of like the realm of the dead than it is the living. And the way that you're here, it just says what's shown in the mystery around Halloween or, or, or the, the day of the dead, that you're here and really your ancestors will visit you on the golden, uh, or what's called the, the sacred cut day of the year where the portal opens. That's where the realms are the closest. This is what All Hallows Eve was about. And then they will visit you with presents and gifts on an altar of things that you that remind you of what kind of power you used to have before they leave you again in the prism until you grow up to realizing what you exactly are. So remember, when you're in the prism, you only have access generally to this seven ray, seven color spectrum of emotions. And then when you move beyond those emotions, you actually are then tapping into the other wavelengths. If you bank left, you're already headed to UV and these are high vibratory, high oscillating frequencies. It doesn't mean that you look at this like, oh, those are the good ones because good and bad is a matter of personality. <laughs> and what, but what it does mean is that you understand the individual powers that are tied into these specific frequencies and how they do connect into who you are. All right, so I trust that that makes perfect sense. I'm setting the lines now to unmute. I love going in. It was fun. I definitely have to do it again. Uh, Sean, we are ready for this. And all right, yeah, all right. <laughs> Holding is my brother. Man, what a great bill, family. I got to give it up to you. We love you, brother, man, for yeah, all that you too, bring brother. forward, <laughs> man. It's just powerful, fam. So the family in, uh, in the chat and YouTube is giving it up. So I want to make sure that you are acknowledged, brother. So we give thanks to you. All right, let's go, fam. We're going to make this quick. We got about 15 minutes of open session. So I'm going to start with my sister, Yvette. Yvette, wholeness family, welcome. Wholeness tribe, um, wholeness of all, wholeness pillars, Sean. Um, I appreciate being here. I um, just wanted to say thank you. But um, I wanted to connect something that you said about the sacred cut and how you were saying, like, you know, when we're watching Netflix and we constantly ask ourselves, like, what am I getting out of this? When we're in conversation with somebody, what am I getting out of this? When I'm doing something, what am I getting out of this? Could you could like, could you say that that is like recognizing the sacred cut? Absolutely. I, I would say that that's just that. OK, when the narrative and this is what I've noticed, like I have a whole council that I sit in with inside of my consciousness, like the more that I become aware of what I really am, I start realizing that I'm not just in this singular dialogue, but it starts that way. It starts with me just saying something to what I think is myself. But as I meditate more, and this is just kind of one of the states, I start realizing that there's a lot of wisdom present within your vehicle. And in the most simplest way, it's just saying that, hey, what is the quality level of what kind of energy we're receiving. Can you bump the quality up a little bit? And this is just like, let's say a car that, you know, if, if it could run on jet fuel or it can run on regular gasoline, but how it runs would still be based on what kind of fuel you put in it. And so I started looking at like, what is the most refined fuel that I could add to my body? Because sometimes, and, and don't get me wrong, when thing, when you have to, dumb out I guess that's the only term I can give sometimes there's times where it's like it's too much 
intelligence, if that even makes sense. Like it's too much of, you need the mind to kind of go and do something monotonous and, and just not even really like something that stimulates the brain in certain ways, just to like give it the ability to, to, to discover the contrast, if that makes sense. And so I don't want to confuse those things because sometimes I feel like, like I'll be reading, right? And then I'll get kind of like to my limit of reading and I need kind of another way to take in the information or to continue on or even just a break for that day. And so I, I, don't, I just would say that we all should be more cautious if we find that all of our time is mostly invested in something that is not really benefiting us. And that first wave of assistance is that voice that's saying, hey, what am I really getting out of this? <laughs> oh, no, thank you. Thank you, Yvette. Appreciate you, family. We're gonna keep it moving. Our brother Kairos in the space, wholeness. Hey guys, how's it going? There so, is. Uh, so, so, um, anytime that I speak, I always want to come with something strong, something genuine, and something that uh, allows us to move forward into our awareness. And most of the time when I'm coming to speak, it just, I'm looking for what to speak on, but it comes as it comes. I've had a, I've had a uh, I've had a uh, two brothers that died in my life. I've had my first brother die when he was thirty one, and uh, four years ago died last month, and he was twenty seven. And that and and my whole life I've I've been in a relationship with death. And with all that being said, I've never lost anybody into these past two brothers. The re so so we're all clear. The reason why I'm bringing this up to everybody is so that I can bring a deeper level of clarity to their uh their their sense of insecurities when it comes to life and death. Um. So I, I live right now in this. I I live just like you guys live right now in physical reality, like we're all talking about, and. We live it, and we're doing what we're doing day in, day out, day in, day out, based off of what we, be what we believe to be true. And we're generating progress based off that same context. Well, basically, I see Seven doing it, we're all doing it as well, but Seven's really touching, and the way he's touching is that um, he's gaining context on what this present moment uh, relates to when it comes to eternity, I guess you could say. And eternity is, is, we're aiming at eternity because after death, after life, you know, you die, so to speak. And you have to continue. And so uh, what I would like to share with you guys tonight is this. In my path, in my process, what I've realized is that the actions that I take here and now reflect on my eternity. On my eternity. And because this remains true, as I act on the experience that I'm going through, if I choose to take actions that are aimed at the long-term game, okay, I wasn't even saying none of that. 30 seconds, bro. Yeah, got you, brother. You're setting on an ocean of existence right now. And what you're experiencing right now is you either being on a spiritual ship of another or your own spiritual ship or a spiritual ship of a family unit. And so if you lack accountability in your own personal day-to-day -to -day motion, that means you don't have a ship. You're on somebody else's ship. And if you if you have your own ship, that means you know you know that. So, so take that into account. You're not just existing for no reason. This shit matters. This shit fucking matters, and you're gonna take that as every step of the way. And so, what basically I see Seven doing, he's trying to let everybody know he needs to start taking accountability for every choice, every thought, and every emotion that flows through your body. Exactly. Because that shit matters. 
And there it is, Holiness Brother. Appreciate you for bringing that transmission and well received. So giving thanks for you for showing up in the space as always, man. Big love. Also, brother, we, and, and, you know, sending love to, you know, to lose a brother, to le lose two brothers. Few of us would know anything of what that feels like. And so, you know, thank you so much for, for staying strong in all this and, and actually letting that be a catalyst to you, you know, understanding such deep things. Obviously, we've talked before in the past and in some of the lounge sessions, so you're filled with wisdom. Keep going. Let's keep going. Wholeness. No doubt. I give I give give it up to that brother, man. We go deep too. So thank you, fam. All right, we're gonna keep it rolling. We got our sister Toya in the space. Wholeness Toya. Wholeness, everybody. Um, this question is for Savan. Um, I've been wanting to ask for weeks this question, but I wasn't sure if it was on topic. Um in your video, what is it called? The Transfiguration Part One. You said something about how the frequencies could um, attack you. And in order to keep this from happening, you have to be like very clear on what you came here to do. So I was wondering if you could elaborate on that a little more. Thank you. Honus, that is really, really open-ended, but I'll just do my best to kind of summarize based on what we're even seeing uh, from our charts this evening. It becomes very easy to understand that certain vibrations will literally be ripped apart in trying to be present in other vibrations or they'll be overridden. And so it's easier to see it that way that you're working on your scale, meaning that you're working on the flexibility of you being able to resonate just like with a piano when you hit a certain key, if there's another piano next to it, that string vibrates. So you're working through the process with yourself of understanding what is the full spectrum of your powers. And if or in the event that you get too far out of the frequencies that are in your circumference or in your experience, that can and will be very traumatizing for you. It could feel like that, hey, you know, I'm going through something that I feel like I don't have as much control over. And so it's understanding where you're most comfortable, which is something that your body, your mind, and your spirit will, will tell you. And then also knowing how to push the boundaries of those comforts without going overboard. So I trust that that, that makes sense in relation to being around or um, being exposed to frequencies that may be too different than uh, where your wavelength is currently. Thank you. All right, Toya, Jesus. thank you. Giving yes. thanks. Up next is our sister Renee, Holiness Renee. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can, Holiness. Okay. Um, first of all, Holiness Pride, I didn't really have a question. Uh, I just wanted to just give thanks because you dropped so many gems. I could just, I could see your mind, the downloads as you were speaking, it was like getting hot and I was just like, wow. And I am in such appreciation of, of all the knowledge you dropped this evening and just even being able to have access uh, to this information that is allowing, allowing me to, uh, find all the pieces of self and bring it all into alignment and balance. I'm in, in, in such appreciation of the gift and the privilege to be amongst uh, all you beautiful souls. Um, and I just want to thank you for Dream Tech. Dream, you know, I live there. That's my that's my favorite place to be. Um, but you dropped so many gems tonight and gave so many confirmations and synchronicities that my hands are shaking right now and my head is humming. It's on fire right now. So just thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for everything. And I know you you pour so much in your heart and soul and your passion into this. And we just honor that. We just honor it. So honest, brother. Wow. Thank you so much, sis. Like it means so much, you know, coming from a genuine heart. I definitely wanted to get on and broadcast this message to everyone 
as soon as possible. There's so much more to this. Uh, I felt like I even needed to just lay out a, a foreground or just the first level at some point so I can keep building on this. But what this ultimately reveals as you begin to let it sink in a bit more is it actually really lets you understand spirituality and the temperament of spirits. Like it would let you understand why beings in a certain range would be naturally hot. Um, also why certain beings would be naturally cold, as they say when they would open up certain portals, there would be this coldness when these spirits would arrive. And so it gives you real context around personalities even, or what could be perceived as personalities. And then that also lets us understand how what we resonate or how we feel really does attract certain types of forces and forms. And even in that mastery, we're not really in that like, okay, I'm trying to avoid this and run from this. It's more of, oh, so that means if I want to get here, this is all I need to do. That's what this knowledge really opens up. Um, I can't expect for everybody to, to get this in one night at all, because actually it's been something that I just go back over and start over from the beginning again. And then I'm like, okay, so what is this? And it continuously, you know, aligns things. And one of the bigger ones uh, in conclusion was also why we don't retain memories as well in super high vibrations. And, you know, that had always been a question for me because I found it once going in that direction, very difficult to maintain what was happening in that experience. So it allowed me even to understand how to reconfigure myself in order to maintain what would be something like a memory beyond what people would conceive as death. Um, this is all the stuff that comes out. And I just feel like, man, this is the, this is the new highest level of awareness and actual fun and education that one could have in such an advanced reality where, you know, we have so many powerful things also around us. So yeah, giving thanks, enjoy. All right, family. So listen, we got four more hands. We're going to close it down with our sister, Sabrina, but up next is Adora Holness family. Holness family. <clears throat> I just wanted to get on and thank our Alba and brother seven for such a stimulating and passionate build. And I did have a specific question about, it was about the second slide in, in which we see the funnel of Jerusalem. And at the bottom there, the giant's well. And I wanted to know if we can receive that as the Vesica Pisces. And if we can also see the giant's well as the root chakra. That was my question. So related to the I, funnel of Jerusalem I, I and the giant's well. Yes, I think I have that image uh, on the screen now. And... You, I always say when, when we're looking at these diagrams, we have a tendency to not to need to look any further than either the family unit or uh, the female faculties of reproduction and often the males, uh, the males process of even insemination. And then we kind of get everything because you always get these deep wells, like what they're calling hells. That, that used to be Hellas, right? And Hellas was a, a sibyl, like a goddess, right? And but you could see why all that corresponds to warm stuff, just like in the center of the earth, it's known to be warm or, you know, you can dig yourself and you can go in certain areas as you keep going down. It, just, it does get hotter and hotter, right? So people who work in mines know it's extremely hot. So it feels like if you just kept going deeper that you would, it would get hotter and hotter. And so these wavelengths and these frequencies are, are really telling us that these are the conditions or the temperaments of life. And since life is in degrees, as you will raise through these degrees of knowledge, wisdom, power, you would become exposed to certain aspects of the existence, uh, starting off in the womb, right? And, and kind of rising from there. So all of these are in, the, in many ways maps to the same kind of experience or journey, but kind of just in different vistas. Like you would see it different or from a different perspective, but technically go through the same experience. 
And this is why learning what's really going on once kind of even solidifies you having your own true north, your own lexicon, your own legend for your own infinite experience. But it's like one that's personal to you as in like, you know, some bodies have tattoos on them, right? So it's just like you have your own waves and guide wave uh, guide posts. And these diagrams, though, they are like, they're going to give us the ultimate, like, here's what everybody has, right? And, and so that, that's kind of how this works, is that you could break all this apart into different parts of the body. Just as we go into this document a bit further, it starts to show just the layering, <laughs> the continuous layering of the process. This is the back of the brain, right? And so you're seeing a whole person on the back of the brain, but even in the center of this, per this, this person's head, which has a tendency to be like um, in the same, as I mentioned, it's the superior brachium has a tendency to be in the same physical condition as the person. So a fat person has a fat superior brachium and that, but in the center of the, 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 its head, which is the minotaur in the middle of the maze, there is also the pineal and the point of, 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 of uh, high levels of communication. So in that way, it's another template. So when we can see this so many different ways, we just kind of come to the conclusion like, wait a minute, this is almost really like Russian dolls. This is the holog it is really holographic. The, the smallest part does really contain a map to the whole. So where does that lead me to? It leads me to the awareness that of course, that even with the most powerful thing, I would have more similarities to that uh, then I would have differences. And now I just need to figure out how do I get myself into that state? And that's why I feel like that's where the electromagnetic spectrum comes in because it's like, okay, well now you need to gain a relationship with these wavelengths. And that's, and, 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 and this is why when, if you would, if you always stay in the visible spectrum, it's like you, you're getting still so small part of the experience. When you start, like I said, with infrared, you can feel when you're exposed to infrared light, you feel like even your pineal gland kind of like pulsating, right? So you, you know, hey, something's happening. And, and I think that's like the, the physical confirmation. But then as you sit with it further, you realize that you're actually learning how to read light and how to read within this wavelength because this infrared light is moving through all the time and it's carrying data. And if you can pick up on it directly, the minimum it can do for you is give you energy. It will also probably give you a certain mineral stack because minerals is a big part of what's going on in all this. Light has to be translated into minerals, right? Everything has to be translated from light into physicality. So that means that we should then be able to take light and then transfer it back into physicality as its original element. And that's when ultimately, and I'll say this and I'm done, what you'll start looking at, especially as the age of aether continues, is humans will come to discover a new food to make this as simple as it can get. And this food will be light. That's why we just did this, this show and it's called light, the next superfood, right? And you will find that light because of it, you know, like meat would be like, <laughs> it's meat is slowed down red flesh, right? So it has a certain energetic potential to it, but imagine you were just with the photon itself and, and how that refinement would allow your whole, your whole being, your whole vesicle, vessel, your whole vehicle to, to be uh, in tune with just a whole different spectrum. You see what I mean? So it's just kind of giving yourself the opportunity, as I said, to learn your ancestors. These are your ancestors i can't say it any more deeper than that boom thanks for the jam right there <laughs> take that <laughs> thank you adora we give thanks fam let's keep it flowing we got our sister letty uh no you know what i'm sorry it's yamanu yamanu then letty wholeness fam it, wholeness wholeness okay. fam uh First of all, I just want to give thanks to the tribe. I don't want to take up a massive amount of time. So I just want to say thank you for the, the astral training and just the speaking constantly, everything that he says. And I want to ask, how does somebody who has a very hard code, like it's in them, to 
be in that wavelength of actually like it's you gotta do as much as possible and it's you take on too much and it's like you know you want to move into that what he was talking about how it's like you don't have to make everything doesn't have to be difficult like with the willingness to move out of it how does a person achieve that holdings thank you once again i'm still trying to achieve it like to be <laughs> honest every day balance is something that you must maintain while moving so every day it becomes me getting in, stepping into just that awareness of how I need to r really like be present <laughs> with actually managing my balance until it becomes a habit. And that's, that's it. That's all you do. That's why we practice aesthetic because it's retraining a pattern and, and you're creating good habits and eventually sooner more sooner than later, it eventually moves away from you. Like I can only stress it as like my advent to get away from duality. I knew how much damage it was doing. It was saying it also in the etymology. There was no plausible reason to continue it. Yet I could not seem to break the habit. Every time something presented itself, my mind would begin to go through its warfare. And so all I kept doing is feeding it more of the reason why it needed to stop this and why it just made no sense. And that's what I was saying to the sister earlier. It becomes like a council of, of, of beings in your head. And you're always not the smartest one in the council. And this is what I love about setting up this juxtaposition within your consciousness and, and literally allowing the wisdom to come in and embody a member of the council that you can often even say, well, shoot, I'm not, I know I'm not going to do the wisest thing, but I still got the wise guy. Hank. It's kind of like you got him still on your shoulder saying, man, I don't know why you keep doing it. But then these are, this is the part of how we step outside of ourselves to in, intercede for ourselves. And as again, those faculties are developed more, you start taking those alternate journeys. You start moving, in a different way and then something happens and that's all I can explain to you because it's unique to the person something happens the more that you literally make you kind of kind of you're literally stepping in and kind of choosing to take their wheel and say no we're going in this direction and this be like the direction that you normally don't go and you'll watch the reality glitch and then that energy it, it lets you understand wait a minute whoa whoa wait what just happened I think it's what they're really saying that this thing is really trying to keep me. I'm really trying to basically stay in this cycle and never move on. And then you start becoming more motivated to move on. You start getting into it now. And, and that's, that's the simple switch right there. Wow. Yeah. Thanks. I was, I was um, peeping my brother, Dr. B and he was talking about 90% of everybody's journey is like a course correction, right? So basically every day is an opportunity for us to reinvent ourselves. You know what I mean? We're, we're always going on these missions and we have to be navigating this whole thing. And so, yeah, it's always great for us to be able to readjust and reinvent ourselves and be in the moment. So we give thanks, brother. Thanks for bringing that forward. We're going to go up next with our sister Letty and then Sabrina is going to close us down. So hold this. Wholeness, so much love and light to everyone tribe. I want to send a virtual hug, hug to the brother that spoke earlier about losing his uh, his brothers. You know, love to you. Thank you so much, Seven, for all the knowledge, wisdom, support, your time, your humor. I'd be laughing over here, but I'd be getting them gems. What I wanted to say was when you mentioned something about glitching earlier, um, I had a few experience, I'm going to mention one of them, and I, I've never been able to really figure it out other than it's a glitch in the matrix. I was, uh, it was early one morning, I was with a group of people, and we were getting ready to do a, a project, and um, there was a tanker, like an army tanker, and it rolled by real slow, and I remember watching, and I remember one of the guys turned, made eye contact with me, you know, and I followed him, and the tanker went around on its way literally less than a second it happened again and i turned to the guy that was standing next to me i said did you just see the tanker run run around uh, twice he said no 
And you know, I'm thinking, I'm not, I know I'm not crazy. You now something like this has happened to me three times, right? In my life that I, that I can count. But I know I wasn't smoking nothing. Yes, I was very awake, but it was straight up. The same thing happened back to back, the same exact thing. So I'm, I just wanted you to touch on that a little bit. Like uh, when that happened, when, when something like that happens, cause I've never really, you know, you, you tell people this and they just think you're crazy or whatever, whatever. But like I said, it's happened a few times in my life, just like that on different occasions. Absolutely, sis. Thank you so much for chiming in. You know, the reality is absolutely not completely what we think it is. Um, all the way from Mandela effects to glitches, you name it. Like I've only come to see more and more how non-solid the reality actually is through different instances. But I always try to like quantify and, and bring some like basic facts around how could things like how could react, how could time be tampered with or why would like when your scenario, why would I see like a replay of something twice? What's going on basically? And in my notions, what I've come to discover is one, as I mentioned, the ability to dream the next day and then live the next day. This was absolutely 100% something I was doing and I was doing it from long points on end, like three weeks, something like this. Mm -hmm. And so this would then lead to the notion of what we discovered in the language that the words were backwards and that somehow we could see tomorrow, okay? But then when you look back at the wavelength, which again now becomes our ultimate blueprint, we find that just like right now where Korea is in tomorrow, that the wavelength over is actually further than tomorrow right now, if you just were putting this all into a timeline. And in that way, when we start to gain more hints of our faculties, then we actually start seeing these glitches that the reality is like not completely solid in the way that this is a person that's actually driving. I'm not saying that they're like, what do they call them, a in, in, NPC? I'm not saying that that's what's yeah. going on. I'm saying that the reality is like got wrinkles in it at times and warps. And also it speaks, like it speaks through these different actions. And these actions are more of like a form of communication than they are a mistake in that way. But it's just like something that is, that's why I was saying the most power that we can gain is to learn the language of light. And we only need to be exposed to it in order to learn. And then when we're exposed to it, when we accept it as a living thing, that's where the ultimate communication opens because it literally takes us to understand, uh, it, it, to, it takes us to acknowledge something's existence. And that's kind of what we also have fought for as people is to be our existence to be acknowledged. And so even the ancestors, this is kind of their story too. They want to be acknowledged. The gods, they want to be acknowledged. Okay, now we're getting it. What we're hearing here is, is that there's a form of communication taking place on these different wavelengths. And we're over here just speaking English. And, but we knew something else. Like I, I kind of had a little different story that I decided not to necessarily roll it out tonight, but I was talking about how we probably have made this journey from long ray radio waves. <laughs> and like, when I say that we're here, we went through all of that basically to get to where we're at right now. And where a lot of folks be is they be trying to drag you back to this deep infrared microwave FM AM zones. That's why they play the radio so much. And then, you know, they got the microwaves going on all the time. And, and it's just like, this is, we're always getting this is what I'm saying. Like just, Hey, stay, go back basically. And I can't say that that's the bad thing either that I'm not into that. I'm just saying there seems to be an inclination to keep us, like more affiliated with long radio waves, FM, AM, microwave, and then infrared, and then the visible spectrum. And away from UV, X-ray, gamma, and cosmic. But instead of making it like uh, something is doing this to us and us versus it, maybe we can just say that we started traveling from long radio waves, which is like our mother. That's like, these long radio waves are like Leviathan itself, like Tiamat kind of large, big, like you would see a big wave 
in an ocean, right? Like a big cosmic ocean, how big a wave would be. That's what a long radio wave is. And then as you move up, let's say you move through all these existence and now you're here on a journey. And so instead of going like backwards, I kind of see it as like what we're doing is, is we're like, we're supposed to be in the visible spectrum and then we're supposed to expand from the visible spectrum. So then we, so we don't like leave our roots. We expand. And so it's like we now, like when we merge further into the infrared from our, per, our current locale, we also equally merge into the UV at the same time, like visually. And this gains the, gives us the ability to be bridges, really, of these different forces and these different powers and energies that are less like personalities, because we're the ones giving personality and, and emotions to everything, and more like agents for specific things, just as what we learn that these, these waves, and I would even encourage some to study these things from a spiritual mindset. Like go and study what, what you go, go have a conversation with Sybil or even chat GPT or whatever about long waves and, and antennas and stuff. And then just really start applying that to yourself. And you will come up with just like I came up with is that we're basically receivers. We're senders and receivers. And what we send and receive is really based on what we really even know is going on. And because we didn't even have really like, I'm just speaking personally on this. I wasn't really taught about gamma waves and radio waves and x-rays. I didn't really make it into that part of school. So it was, that was always an invisible thing to me. Like I was always fascinated by how a phone could ring and somebody could talk in thin air and how that was literally a signal coming through and I couldn't see it. But that's as far as I really went with that. And I don't think I would ever, unless I had this level of metaphysical knowledge, tried to connect it to spirits in spiritual realm they are totally separate in everybody's mindset but they're not separate they're exactly what we're talking about and so yeah that that's the only thing i can say on these notions that sometimes many of us have powers and abilities and they they bleed in and we used to call it they bleed into the reality but really what it is is, is if you look at everybody has a star your emittance meaning your dot in the sky and just like a fiber optic cable or a spark plug, how much connection you have with that, that pipeline? Like, do you have clogs in your pipeline? And I think that's what block chakras are, which are block emotions, things that happen that don't allow you to move through the wavelength, don't allow you to cycle the energy. So then it's like the energy or the waters become spoiled, stale. You have a move to wavelength UV to clean out some of those memories, gamma, to kind of strange things, cosmic, to get the bigger picture and then roll back down to radio waves. You know, that's like the service, the guardian, the mother, the nurturing, because you see that it, it also becomes very beneficial to move through the waves, just like the sun moves through its positions, right? And it has a different energy in every position that is in as it's moving through the day and then it goes under and it goes into the netherworld, right? So it's the same thing. It's healthy for us to move from long wave to gamma and, and cosmic and not just have this idea that we're gonna stay in cosmic rays because we have now this, this dwarfed idea that makes us feel like by this mindset that UV is the good ones and the X-rays and the gammas are the good ones and then the radiation and then the microwaves are the bad ones. You see what I mean? And we kind of go in like that when it's not like that at all. It's actually that in this, in this uh, um, infrared light, there are bad waves in the infrared light. Like I can give you a clean infrared light or I can give you a dirty infrared light. You see what I mean? Based on the wavelengths and the contamination of the signal. So really what we're doing is we're trying to get all of our signals into like the best condition. And then that way we completely broadcast as whatever we are because that's going to be a trip, right? Like imagine having the bridge completely clear so that all your long waves are moving right into your gamma, then into your cosmic, and then coming back around freely. This is the way. This is where I'm trying to get with it right now. Then when that happens, then we'll, we'll inform from there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. We give thanks, wholeness. <laughs> Thank you, fam. Holding this. So listen, this is it right here. We have our sister Sabrina. Woo! She's 
she's gonna close us down. But man, what a what a phenomenal build to see. And I, I gotta give it up, brother. Like Thoroughly this was really a home stuff. home run hitter, man, no doubt. So <laughs> Sabrina, oh, you know what? So to, we gonna call this the Sovereign Lounge Session XL. Exactly. This, this was, was a maxi tonight. Extra like, large. We, yeah. So we went I might get in trouble for this one. This one blew way over the time phrase, but I loved every bit of it. Let's go. <laughs> Sabrina Honus. Hi there. Thanks so much for having me up. My question is around Germanic alchemy and the foundational principle of containment or secrecy while creating. So Germain teaches that a thought matrix once cast but before manifest can be destabilized by the thoughts and intentions of others made aware of it as it is still, while it is still a work in progress. So in a project report, requiring collaborators coming together to bring a vision into physical being. There is a process of sharing the awareness, and I witness sometimes those with whom it's been shared experience an amnesia of where they heard it from or the root download and misremember it as something that had come through their own channel and sort of like run off in another direction, claiming ownership and building off a partial download if they were like only given pieces of like during the vetting process. And I acknowledge that a similar download can come through to multiple beings, and it's not really owned by anyone walking in service. However, when the container of the embryo, so to speak, proposed as the protection by the original channeler, selected to steward the growth process and see it through in the right way is not honored, does that destabilize the vision when pieces of it are copied or like branched in half-baked ways before it's been birthed into our world in reality. And is there a way to call that that sort of energy runoff or leap back into the wholeness of the original during the gestation process? And how can we navigate this process of finding true comrades or calling together a mission aligned, behaviorally elevated council in the effort of building and moving the ball forward while maintaining the equilibrium of the nascent creation and shielding it from altering or tampering in a way that knocks it off its natural course as purely delivered, instructed, and conducted continually through the Rainbow Bridge Gateway. And anyway, to what degree does its mother or source receiver even matter in the ongoing materialization process? The wild part is I know exactly what you're saying. Okay, so let me just try to take this apart very simply because we got a couple things that you're mentioning here, and we'll kind of bring it in just kind of like the layman's terms, which is basically when you have something original and, and something divine. And you're also in some type of nucleus where there are others who are still virtue signaling, basically. Like they're literally taking projections and making them their own and then almost even trying to make our claims of ownership, right? Which then kind of brings in this kind of questioning, which is even almost loops within itself, which is basically, am I being selfish? Uh, am I thinking about this the wrong way? Or is this really uh, not integral? Or even what should I do about this? Have I violated uh, my own truths by continuing to give these secrets? Um, because this is like real, this is the real deal. This is what's really going on. Like you will have people that are scouring spiritual circles, spiritual conversations for their next podcast and their next, uh, pretend elevation of, of being conscious, uh, in front of others as they search for more likes, more money, more cash apps, more whatever or even just attention, you know, and then also they do it as if they're not completely aware at all that it even hurts a person. Like there's no mindfulness, that's the best word, uh, present at all. Uh, and of course you can look really strange even calling this out because this is again, supposed to be something collective. What do I do? First is what I learned about those principles because you are right that exposing people to things that you know are very sacred are very that they came with that marker seal of it's a mantle this is something that you're approved to usher in you need to really understand how to nurture that until it is ready for 
others to hold it, to touch it, uh, where it won't be so fragile that like a baby, if they drop it, then they can put some pretty, uh, they, can, they can damage it in some way. Um, this is very tough for a, a very open person, an open being, because oftentimes when you receive any kind of transmissions or, you know, things that are such, that are so exciting, the first thing you want to do is, is share it with someone. And, and I'm not saying not to share. What I'm saying is always to consider what is the role that that person has in it, because that determines whether it should be shared with them or not. That's what I learned. Like, cause I, I <laughs> like I'd have some things that I'd be ready to, it hadn't happened yet, but I'd be ready to talk about it. But then I knew, okay, you can't even talk about this because you're gonna basically increase the rate of it not manifesting. And I was, I've had so many different trials with seeing how that works, that it's really a thing. If you talk about certain stuff and it's too sensitive, it's too powerful, and you talk about it early, it, the probability of it not happening is great versus when you just hold it in and no, don't really let anybody know about it, except, and if we have an exception there, it is those who will still be needed to directly manifest it then. So it's like the easiest way to understand that is like if we're, um, like if, let's say if I have a baby, there's me and there's the mother. So any conversations about the baby, especially when the baby hasn't hatched yet, is just between me and the mother because nobody else really needs to be involved in the process, right? Maybe I even question if I'm gonna even talk to my mother about it or if I'm gonna talk to other people about it because just on the most traditional level, they may see something that is gonna be jeopardized for them with the advent of that. And most of the time, because jealousies and the opposite side of the emotions do exist, it is just that. They see, okay, if he gets this new car, you know, that's being very simple about it, or, you know, if we manifest this, this futuristic clinic, then, you know, this person's gonna be like on top and people are, they love her idea and they don't love my, you see, so they're still somewhat in that nucleus and you, you have to be able to spot that. You have to be able to know, okay, this is, this is not necessarily the place that I'm gonna bring this in or these are not the people that I'm gonna bring it to, just to kind of avoid this part, which is now trying to determine what to do and how to handle the situation um, because now, you know, it's, it's taken its course and there's other things that have come up, come from it. Um, also, you know, you mentioned St. Germain and you mentioned many of the, the concepts around high levels of manifestation. Um, but because you mentioned those two together, I would have to bring notice to that this is so common inside of the St. Germain quote unquote circles of a certain level of high level consciousness that is nowhere near grounded. And that also has a heavy level influence and reliance upon forms and eidolons that are not completely understood by those who are partaking with them. And so it is in every respect, our right to exercise the power of language and the cosmic laws and the symbols which reveals that we are sovereigns. And sovereigns, we are sailors. We came over the cosmic ocean in the sea. And we don't owe or have debts to anything. So thus, we don't take positions of worship in a way of how it's understood today. We take, if, if it's worship, it's more in the context of how one would admire their ancestors. Not in a way where they would be asking their ancestors for anything, nowhere different than we would ask someone older as a younger person for something, but more in a way of honor and respecting them and understanding what we must preserve of theirs and take care of. And that can be really skewed when also you have power hungry things going on, power moves, money, these kind of things now playing dynamic roles into spirituality, right? And so I would always be mindful again of just what you know, what you've come to know through your own truths, through your own gnosis, and then always kind of like doing your own discernment because your discernment is gonna be your most powerful tool here in the reality. Doing your own discernment of kind of where a person is on the scale of the, their own awareness of exactly how much power and ability that we're talking about because your first obligation is to yourself. Like just so it's very clear, take care of yourself 
And then once you can stabilize, this is how I was trained from my own higher self. Once you can stabilize, then you actually start working and assisting and dealing with others because there's absolutely no way to actually deal with and helping people if you yourself haven't actually reached a certain state. And so that's that's what it is. And so I trust that in in what I'm saying that there will be some morsels of, of truth that you can take for yourself and, and be nourished. And also just to understand, like for me to hear you articulate so well exactly what I'd be going through sometimes and what I experience, it's also a signal within itself that intelligent people, I call it the penalty of leadership sometimes, but the intelligent people, and that's why I always say, hey, plagiarization is the highest form of flattery, but it's not fun. Um, but the reality is, is that it is still at the core essence of it all, a test <laughs> to like sometimes how freely you can give away something and how much you have grown to not have debts at all with the society or the reality. This is what is bought ease to me is that I'm good. I don't really, I, I, I received everything the universe could give me and I'm so grateful for that. Anything else coming after this, I have to be willing to say that, hey, if somebody else needs this, then I guess it's on them because for me, I'm only going to get better things than what I already have, right? So there just becomes that point where even though, again, bear in mind to everything that I just said about being mindful about your creations, still being aware that there's that, uh, those other tests about attachments and I feel like that those tests are always like up for schedule at some point. So, okay, let's do an attachment test. And <laughs> it's funny when the attachment tests come and just be like one of your, your, you know, one of your things that you've enjoyed the most or you really feel like was, was, was yours or whatever. And there's somebody else dancing around with it. Like, you know, and it's like, Hey, this is still an attachment test. And I can respect that. Like I can respect that about this lesson and this, 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 ever evolving scenario that we're in of how it will want to make sure that we keep it tight and that we realize still that everything that we already, everything that we already have or everything that we already can have, <laughs> and everything that we already are and everything that we can be is already who we are. And, 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 it's, and, and if somebody or something can even play around with that or move that, then that's, that's what we actually need to work with. And so that's what I take as a lesson, like, hey, you still are, you know, you're catching too much feelings about this a little bit too much. You know, you need to, you need to chill out because they got, they got you out. You're outside of your shell. I don't like to see you like this. I don't like to see you in these kind of frequencies, what's happening. But then the real part about this will be Sabrina, you, you would have already been told about this. <laughs> you would have already seen it all playing out and seeing how it was all going to happen. And you just trusted that it wouldn't go this way because this is ultimately what happens. We give people, we become those same, the same test that we get, we become the same, we become the being that's giving the test. You see what I mean? So when you came out there and you, you basically trusted a person to be integral or those to be integral, and then they blew their shot again, that's the test for them to determine if they were going to come out of the pattern. So you got to think about it more in that way, not that it's like, you know, what the universe wanted and the mother said, this is how it was going to come out. That, that's not the truth, because then what you're doing is you're kind of you're muddling the truth. right? <laughs> and there's no need to do that. We don't need to make excuses for other people's ignorance and other people's inability to understand the uh, how they should be handling themselves and how you would handle sacred things. So I trust that that makes sense. And obviously, you know, draw closer to those that you know and that you can see are on the level. Like, that's what I love about this tribe is like we got people from all over the place that do different things. And you will find that there's still this same line of mutual respect and mindfulness with everyone where we're only trying to really see you increase. And we're also pulling from a well that is inexhaustible. So turning on, your, turning on each person's uniqueness is also key. And when environments are not doing that, that's also when others feel like they need to lo l l jump onto somebody else's stuff. 
Over in, the, over in secret energy, I hardly ever see something similar to what another person is doing because everybody's tapped into not only their archetype, but the spin of their uniqueness. And so it's incredible to see it flow. But yeah, hopefully I, I trust that this was instrumental to your growth and also to others. And also, you know, just in concluding this evening, I wanted to give thanks, Tribe, you know, as we soar into this new level of not only awareness and truth, and connection to self. Let me just kind of jump on the camera real quick here and kind of close it down. And I'll actually bring it up, like, you know, again, you know, whatever way you're flying it. But I just wanted to take a moment and, and just kind of center in, just kind of like and, and wind everything down because I know we, we talked a lot, we learned a lot. And let me see here. Yeah, I think you should be able to kind of see me on that side, maybe. I guess Sean will handle that. But anyway, I'm just, I want to take the moment and I just want to let everybody know that, you know, this has been a, a very serious journey. Um, it has also been a mantle in itself. I was looking at like words like dismantle, you know, and it's like, and what is a mantle? A mantle is when a responsibility is placed on you that is very serious and it really demands that you even you even seek to see the best of yourself because you're going to actually have to eliminate certain things about even the way that you are to completely truly benefit from what is to be learned from wearing these mantles and i see a lot of youngsters now and i'm like really excited too about like i even see some younger kids they kind of elected me as being like the mentor of the year or something and even things like that they're they're so touching to me uh, just to to have that kind of impact even on young people's lives just because I decided that I would continue with my different thoughts <laughs> and I would go into un, un, I would go uninterrupted right or yeah I would go uninterrupted and and even if it was me removing myself from society until I could magnetize the kind of energy that was going to be beneficial for my growth. So that's where you trust yourself. You have to be willing to understand that even if you moved away from everything, that what is really for you, it will find you there. And also remember stagnant waters, what we talked about, like we're 70% water. So you got to keep it moving. Like you got to get the action and play. Like you, you definitely should look into more of taking care of your body instead of thinking your body is separate. Uh, watch how you keep your body and your spirit in tune with each other. Because if the spirit gets too big, it only really wants to eliminate the body. And we've talked about that. It wants to eliminate the physical experience. But there's a balance that must come between all these realms. And that if everything goes well, as your spirit is continuing to increase, your physical body is actually what you would say is aging. And then even before you would even get to where you would feel like you were dying, you would already be getting out of your body. And then you will already be experiencing these other realms and these realities. And as things go even more well for you in the perfection of the language and the perfection of your DNA, you would come to understand how you can remain conscious throughout your entire cycle of experience through infinity. That's really where we're going with this. Also, um, some spinal notes here, we have been making extreme progress, not only in the dream world with our energetic field training. Again, that's available to everyone. Uh, there's just nine power sessions of hemisynchronization synchronization and some builds that just keep that going. That's extremely instrumental. Take the time for yourself and jump into that, especially since it's, it's available there for you uh, for free. And but as we continue to go forward, like remember, we're now at the stage of we can image the thoughts from your mind in text. So you think, and then we can see the text of what you're thinking. Our next move is to then apply that technology into what conversations are going on when you're dreaming or re-imaging EEG into image. So you could see the images from your dream tomorrow. Again, some would insist such things are like have no place, but I feel like that, again, if we're pushing so much of the technology and the reality 
And all of it is pretty much externalized. We don't even really know what the stuff does anymore. It's just like, okay, this is an over-glorified keyboard or, or search engine. Firing some of this stuff towards the body and how the body, mind, and the consciousness works is probably going to be a really good idea. But you can see how the same rules apply. Like the reality has chosen to still not really give the complete description of where God is anyway. And, you know, who would really happen during certain times spiritually. And, you know, so it's still keeping a bulk of the common sense secret. So you can't necessarily expect for them to all of a sudden want to roll out. Let's let you see what the dream world is, not just any dream world, but yours specifically, or even ideas of mapping the dream world. Such things are notions that we would have to really bring in play and what we'll find is, and I'll say this in conclusion, when we do it, we reach conclusion. No different than I reached conclusion on building secret energy. We actually have one more rendition coming through this month to match in with everything we've designed, of course, in Discord, and then all the stuff that we've done with Sybil, WealthyBot, automated crypto trading, all those things that I decided, hey, you know what? I feel like as a community, we're going to eventually need these things, but let's get it built not just as an idea. So I encourage everyone to keep building, learn how to ground all your powers into also the reality if you choose. That's what manifestation is, to be able to bring something from these other wavelengths and frequencies that are invisible and then manifest them into the physical reality by nourishing them step by step. And then also realizing just how much attention that it takes in soul searching that it takes to actually know that what you're projecting is not from a selfish standpoint or not from a, a, a delusional standpoint, right? Because all the things that you're creating, when you can create them from the clear state, that's just how long it will be able to serve you. That's its longevity. That is its purity. That is like you shooting the arrow straight right? And then you let it go and then it, it hits its target. So yeah, that's what we got for everybody this evening. Yeah, we did this. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute the lines. If anybody wants to say honest, then I'm sure the world would love to hear you. And this one will go forward through history and also back through the wavelength just to represent who we are as a collective. Thank you so much, honest. Wholeness. 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 Love, love, love. All right, family. Great build. Love you, Sean. We out, holding us. Easy, Sean. Big love. <laughs>